probably not gonna work. Oh. Oh, is it working? Oh, it's come off. It's on a separate stream. Okay. But I think it says that we are live. Are we live? Okay. Right. I sort of don't. Well, you see how many people are in yep. this stream, so it might be. I I'm not seeing this pop up on mine. Okay. Right. It's a, it's a separate thing. It's still loading. But yeah. Okay. Right. We're live. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, I see it. Can you get people to hop across to this stream? Yes. Um, that was easier said than done. So we managed to figure out the last, the, the problem we had last time. We got through that fine. This time we're just suffering from poor internet and stuff like that. I've seen a comment saying, can you go through Nazi Germany? That's the whole point of this stream. You'll be pleased to know. <laughs> right. I can't see the chat anymore. Okay. Um, That's how I like it. <laughs> um, yeah. Send people across. I am now. Hello and welcome everyone who's here already. Yes. Uh, apologies for the technical delay. That was kind of pretty mean of us. Yeah. I'm impressed by people's patience. That is some intense resilience. Oh, what you mean is it's pretty mean of my my router oh, or yes, my yes. Wi-Fi. I was scared you were going to blame me for that. Yeah, I'll blame you. <laughs> right. Um, I will go over and make sure the new chat is okay. Um, yeah, we've got 21 people over. So there's about okay. 100 or so um, on the old stream. Um, if you could just sit in that chat and send people over to the new yes. stream. Um, so I'm going to have... Oh, this is sort of I say exciting. Um, right, I will be monitoring both yep. chats. Yeah, so Byron's just sat over off to my side here. Hello, we he were going to have me in vision, but... I yeah, not. that was using up too much computer power, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, bandwidth and stuff, internet issue. Yeah. Anyway... I guess we can we can get going. Yeah. May as well because we're like half an hour late. Um, yeah. Actually, the very first thing we're doing is there's video, which I even went to the effort of queuing up. Like I hadn't last time. I worked out how to do that because um, I made a video on the very first topic, so the abdication of the Kaiser. So, guess we'll take it away. The fighting of. Oh. Nineteen. 1918, killing 2 million German troops and wounding another 4 million. 55% of German troops became casualties. To make it worse, Germany's debts trebled to 150 billion marks because the war was so expensive. Now, this British Navy ships came from ports and preventing ships to deliver food, killing over 750,000 die of food shortages in one. You have a country in dire need of help. You see, Germany lost much of its people, even more it was defeated on the battlefield. November 1918, the abdication of the Kaiser. On the 9th of November 1918, Kaiser, an emperor, is in the army headquarters in the town of Spa, 700 kilometers away from Berlin. His government has lost control of the country. In some towns, workers and soldiers have set up unofficial councils to replace the Kaiser's old ones. There are strikers and rioters. It's not going well. He receives message from his ministers that the only way to restore order in Germany is for him to abdicate. Of course he refuses. Why would he want to do that? Then General Wilhelm Brunner, the German army's second in command, tells him the bad news. He's lost support of the German army. He has to go. That very same day, the 9th of November 1918, Kaiser is forced to abdicate, going to take in the early hours of the morning. The streets of Berlin were full of people. Some gathered civilly, others armed, taking over parts of the city. Philip Scheidman, a leading member of the Liberal Party in the German Parliament, the SPD, Social Democratic Party, was inside the right side, the German Parliament building. He was told that armed rioters were preparing to announce a communist government in Berlin. Scheidman runs to the nearest stone window of the Reichstag, and seeing the grounds that the car is on, there is a new German Republic. His appeal is for a peaceful transition in this new republic. The SPD had to work quickly to establish a republic. On the 9th of November, that very same day, the Kaiser's Chancellor, Max von Baden, 
handed over his office to Frick Ebert, leader of the AD. On the 10th of November, Ebert made an agreement with Jed Broner to work with the army to keep the communists out of power. He then suspended the old Reichstag parliament, disbanding members. Instead, Ebert named six moderate politicians, meaning they were not extreme left or right wing, for the Council of the People's Representatives. The council was to be of the country, but only until a new constitution, method of running the country, could be agreed. The plan was to keep the extremist party out of power while transitioning into the new republic. Finally, on the 11th of November 1918, Ebert's representative, Matthias Sulzberger, signed the armistice, a formal agreement between the Allies and Germany to end World War I. The German Revolution had begun. In November 1918, the abdication of the Kaiser. Okay, we're back. Um, I, I'm aware of the fact that the lag is pretty horrendous at the moment, as someone apparently said in the comments. Someone. That was the whole, that was the whole thing with the half an hour of mm. trying to sort it out. We've managed to reduce down like my computer's currently working overtime, mm. and for some reason, actually, that's an interesting thing. On cloudy days, my internet gets worse, and it's a cloudy day today. Yeah, I blame the weather. Yes, and nothing. And to do BT. With... And yes, BT. BT. <coughs> BT. I have BT, and I don't have any of these problems. Sorry. What? All of the other people I know who have BT have really bad internet problems. I it's got a great upload speed and nothing else. It has got a great upload speed, I'll give them that. I'm not being paid by BT. But you can get better Wi-Fi outside your house than you can in <laughs> Anyway, so... This message was brought to you by a shareholder of BT. <laughs> the next thing to talk about is the setting up of the Weimar Republic. History. So, the nine months from November 18... It just says 1819. <laughs> It mean, I mean 1919. <laughs> the nine months from November 1919 to July 1919 were like quite a rocky time for the Weimar Republic because they were trying to put a new government in place. Previously they'd had the Kaiser, obviously, and now they had to find some new people. Apparently it is very quiet. Oh. Yeah, I can see it is looking hmm. pretty quiet. And that's up at the top. That's up at the top. Full volume. Um, hmm. Sorry to interject. Just fiddle with the settings here a second. On my yeah. audio settings. I could flick it onto one of the other options on the snowball. Do it. Um, Even though your snowball has options. Yeah, it has a one, a two, and a three, and I don't know the difference between them. Oh, I've just got one of the old fashioned ones where it's just you plug it in and that's it. Oh, okay, so we've got some good um, contrast. Have, have it's not quiet, it's too quiet. Okay. I'm right. seeing more quiet, not quiet than um, quiet. So, is it is it louder now? It should be. Let's hope it is. Anyway. Oh yes, much better. There we okay, go. Okay, that's right. good. Let's go. Um. Right. So yeah, President Ebert, who is like the new president. That's probably not how you pronounce it. I'm gonna do some awful German pronunciation here. Mm -hmm. and um, I can't help you. Yeah. <laughs> So he took steps to try and increase people's confidence in the Republic so that he could like establish his government properly. Um, so one of the things he did was he kept civil servants, as in like people who worked from the government, the same from the ones that like the same ones as had been there under the Kaiser. He also um, he uh, yeah, so that kept Germany running in the same way. He re reassured the army that they wouldn't be reformed, so like the officers would keep their ranks, and that helped him keep support of the German army because, like, obviously army officers wouldn't be particularly happy if they suddenly lost their ranks, etc. Um, what do you do with the mouse here? <laughs> I don't have enough USB ports for a mouse, so. Use of mouse pad, like a human. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> I'm really terrible with mouse pads. Yeah, so um, he also reassured leaders of industry that like no factories would be seized. Again, that kept leaders of industry on side because they wouldn't want their factories seized. Um, and there was also to be no nationalisation of private industries. So that. Um, yeah, and keeps keeps um, 
the people running the industries on side because they'd rather not have their private industry nationalised. If you're the person owning the industry, you're not really going to want it to be nationalised. Um, so yeah, that also that kept the economy ticking over. So essentially what he was trying to do is keep the stability from the previous like regime as he brings in his new one. And he won support of the trade unions by telling their leader Carl, Carl Legion or something like that um, that they would try and get a, an eight hour working day which obviously workers liked that idea but there were also like extreme type parties radicals weren't so happy and there were lots of like demonstrations and riots still going on so Germany wasn't exactly stable but this like fragile control lasted long enough to agree a new constitution so on the 19th of January 1919, elections for a new National Assembly took place and the National Assembly was essentially a big bo body of people who then go and elect, who then like decide on what the actual constitution is going to be. So like a constitution is like a framework for running a country essentially. It's kind of hard to explain what a constitution is actually, but hopefully you know what it is already. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there were lots of people, 82% of the electorate voted, moderate parties won quite a lot of the seats, um, all was reasonably alright. However, there were quite, there's quite a lot of violence going on in Berlin at the time, so the assembly had to meet in the peaceful town of Weimar, 250 kilometres away. Mm. And that's why it's called the Weimar Republic. <laughs> Fun been, fact. Have you been to Weimar? No, I haven't. Oh. I'd like to go. Yeah, I've heard good things. Berlin's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> I've had to go to all, all the places I've been to in Germany. Big long list. <laughs> yeah, I've been to Berlin, I've been to Cologne, I've been to Bonn, Bonn yeah. uh, Saarburg. <laughs> There's the four places in Germany I've been to. Been to none. <laughs> oh, you have to leave the UK first. <laughs> that's true, that's true. Anyway, um, yeah, so eventually, on the 31st of July 1919, this National Assembly uh, agreed a new constitution which was known as the Weimar Republic. Or the constitution became known as the Weimar Republic. So, actually, there's there's a nice diagram here. Um, I'll, I'll show you the, the lovely diagram, if I can line it up. Um, there we go. And that goes through, like, who elects who and how it works. But essentially, there's the electorate, who are, like, all the people who do the electing, and that consists of all men and women aged over 21. The electorate vote for a president every seven years, and they vote, vote for the Reichstag every four years, and the Reichsrat every four years as well. The president was just like a dude. He didn't really have, he didn't have any part in day-to-day -day politics, but he did have some political powers. So for instance, he chose the chancellor, and then the chancellor was like our, the equivalent of our prime minister, who's like head of the government and um, chooses all of the government ministers. Ministers being like the important government people that like oversee specific things. Um, and then the cabinet is like all of the most important ministers. They're like a, 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 the group name for them. All of the most important ministers. And they are like the important decision making body. And then parliament itself had two houses. So those are like two different I don't know how to, like a parliamentary house is like a, a group of people who like sit and vote and have the same powers. Mm -hmm. um, so like we have two in our constitution where we've got the House of Commons and the House of Lords. It seemed, except, was it the lower house and the upper house? Yeah. So, mm. yeah. So yeah, they had the Reichstag and the Reichsrat. And the Reichstag was the more powerful of the two. And they were directly elected by the people using proportional representation. Whereas the Reichsrat represented regions of Germany. So each region would send like a certain number of representatives depending upon like how big this region is. So a bigger region would send more reps. The constitution was one of the most democratic, or at that point was like the most democratic one in the world, I believe. Mm. Um, obviously women had become allowed to vote. They'd reduced the voting age from 25 to 21. Proportional representation was used which uh, 
maybe our country should consider. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> Though, as we'll find out later, some of this is not a great argument for PR. No, that's true. <laughs> PR directly isn't responsible. Oh, no, no. It's called actual democracy. Anyway, <laughs> my political views aside. <laughs> Opinion neutral channel. <laughs> One representative for every 60,000 votes. So proportional representation is where the number of votes directly like correlates with how, like who gets elected. So there would be one representative elected for each part for every sixty thousand votes each party got. Obviously, if it was a different country in the same system, that would change slightly, depending on how many people voted. Um, yeah, so that made it more democratic than Germany under the Kaiser and Britain at the time. There are also some like checks and balances to keep control. Not that they worked in the end. <laughs> um, so. The idea was that no one person or group could have too much power, so the Chancellor could only pass laws in normal circumstances if the Reichstag and the Reichsrat voted for them. The Reichsrat um, could s delay any new laws, even though they could that were like passed by the Reichstag, even though they couldn't put forward laws of their own. Um, but if the Reichstag over uh, overruled the Reichsrat's delaying of their new rules by two thirds then that could be cancelled. Kind of complicated there. Um, by two thirds majority. And then central government had more power than it did under the Kaiser, whereas under the Kaiser it just basically been the Kaiser's doing the ruling. And local government retained some power with the like Reichsrat, etc. as well. Those are separate things. So one, there are a couple of problems with the constitution as well. So the where they had proportional representation that meant a lot of smaller parties gained seats so you didn't end up with a two-party system that you have here where we've got um first past the post which means you've got this two-party system proportional representation allows for more smaller parties to gain seats and so that meant that there were a lot of coalition governments a coalition government is where you have like two parties working together as a government or more or more true and um yeah, coalition governments, obviously that idea of working together, that's quite a good idea, but that did mean that sometimes there was a lack of clarity as per what's going on, because one party would want one thing and one party wants another thing. Um, yeah. And also that would often, where you've got people doing that, they would have to break up the government quite often and try again. <laughs> So coalitions fell apart quite a lot. Mm -hmm. There were nine coalition governments between 1919 and 1923. So Fun fact. Nine in four years? Yes. And I'm assuming it's just like the same group of parties. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Not very stable. Which I just want to say is not an indictment of the coalition system as a whole, but no. more just an indictment of how weak and sort of yes. confused the Weimar Republic really was. Everyone wanted different things. Oh, yeah. And I guess, well, any post-monarchy society like that at that mm. time is going to yeah. have a lot of competition. There's also a problem where it's like weak in a crisis because when you're in a crisis, you need to make quite swift decisions. Mm. And when you've got like a coalition government, that's easier said than done. So the way to get around this was Article 48. Um, that allowed the Chancellor to bypass the Reichstag and just pass laws straight through the president. Um, ended up being the downfall of the Republic. So. Yeah, that's... <laughs> That seems to be the commonality between democracies that tend to sort of fall apart, and get replaced. Mm. There's always a rule like that where basically it can be exploited. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so obviously, but also the presence of Article Forty Forty Eight made the Constitution seem kind of weak. Because like, all right, so it's great, but in times of crisis, actually, it's not so great. And so people were like, maybe an all-powerful leader's better, maybe something else is better. It didn't really do much to help the image of the Weimar Republic. And obviously there's still this whole sense that actually the Weimar Republic had been a thing that had been imposed rather than something that everyone had chosen. It wasn't like there was a sense that it wasn't really the choice of the people. And then there were several parties who'd been elected to the Reichstag, such as 
the nationalists and communists who were openly opposed to like parliamentary democracy um, in their own special different ways <laughs> so yeah so like the moderates thought it was flawed the extremists were just outright opposed to it so no one's really happy um, consequently there were some early challenges to the republic I mean it was challenged basically the whole time it existed <laughs> so one thing is that the politicians who set it up were the same ones who had surrendered at the end of World War One, and the ones who had signed the Treaty of Versailles, which was very unpopular. So consequently they were kind of unpopular. The Treaty of Versailles is something kind of important to talk about. So after the armistice was signed, so the thing that ended World War One, the Allies, the Allied leaders decided to agree terms of peace, and then on the 28th of June 1919 the treaty was signed in the French Palace of Versailles. Wonder why it's called the Treaty of Versailles. <laughs> um, yes, and so like the German people obviously were like, peace, that's good, but they didn't particularly like the terms of the treaty. And there are a few reasons. The Allies, it's known as the, the Diktat, um, so the Allies had refused to allow any German representatives to join in treaty discussions. So diktat meaning that they were like the terms of the treaty were imposed on the Germans rather than agreed with them. Um, like the Germans had asked for concessions and all of those concessions were refused. And then Article 231 of the treaty stated that the Germans had caused the war. This was not a very popular interpretation and you wonder why. So Germany didn't believe it had caused the war. Um, and like war guilt also meant that the Germans, because they were responsible for the war, they had to pay reparations, which was like compensation, to the Allies. Um, and also the Allies insisted, insisted on reductions to German armed forces and territory. So basically the Allies just came in and just ate up Germany. <laughs> and consequently they weren't very happy. So in 1921 reparations were eventually fixed at 136 million marks, which is about 6.6 .6 billion pounds. Kind of a lot. Um, Germany lost all of its colonies, so there were 11 colonies in Africa and the Far East that were handed over, mm -hmm. and they were like given over as mandates, which were like territories to look after. Yeah, back when I did um, Germany, they completely glossed over the fact that the Germany even had a sort of proper empire. Like They were an actual Yeah, like, power. they were a big power. Massive. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Still corners of Africa that speak German. Yeah. Sorry. Cool. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the German military was also just sliced. Um, the army had to be limited to a hundred thousand men. There was to be no heavy artillery, things like that. Um, the uh, army was only to be used within Germany. Their navy was cut as well. Um, the air force was destroyed. The Rhineland was demilitarised and Allied troops were actually stationed in the Rhineland until 1930. Germany lost some of this, not just its colonies, but land like actually attached to Germany. So there's the Alsace and Lorraine, which is probably not pronounced like that, which was given to France. There are a few other areas that's like a bit given to Germany, Germany? Given to Belgium <laughs> and a bit given to um, Poland. So quite a lot of people who had been previously living in Germany were now living in other countries, even though they hadn't moved. Um, also, where um, West Prussia was given to Poland, Germany was cut in two, so there was a bit of Germany that was just detached from the rest of Germany, mm -hmm. which seems like a very strange yeah. move. I believe it was based not on geography, but on terms of sort of industrial output or something like that. Oh, right. So it was... I forgot what area it is. Um... I think it's now part of Poland anyway. Yeah, well, but it's Prussia that was. Yeah, uh, getting into the whole Prussia thing. Uh, have you ever seen? Have you ever tried to explain the whole difference between Germany and Prussia? Let's not go there. Let's not go there. That is a great, great answer. <laughs> um. Yeah. So anyway, Germany ended up being. It's just I've just got this long list of all the different places that were given away here. 
But in total, Germany lost 10% of its population and 13% of its European territory. So it took a massive cut. Mm -hmm. And it also lost 50, almost 50% of its iron and 15% of its coal reserves. So that's going to be terrible for German industry. And then there's also Dolchstoss. Again, probably not pronounced like that. Which is Yeah. The stab in the back. Oh, yes. yes. And um, well, this is one of the reasons the Treaty of Versailles was unpopular. Obviously, there are other reasons. Um, and that was because the German people the belief of the German people that the army had not been defeated in the war and in November 1918 the army was in retreat but people were like they hadn't been defeated so the, the idea therefore is that the German politicians had stabbed the German army in the back <laughs> Dolchstoffs <laughs> and um, obviously they're like maybe we don't like these politicians they've just stabbed our army in the back uh, Music Echo just says it's the Dolchstoss. Okay. Sorry. Yes. It's kind of hard to explain how something's pronounced in a chat. It is, but he's done a very good job. Yeah. I'll take Music Echo's word for it. Um, yes. So the treaty obviously was very bad for the German economy. Um, made the Weimar Republic quite weak. And made people not like the politicians who had signed the treaty. So these politicians became known as the November tri criminals because that was the month in which Germany had surrendered now there were also challenges to the Weimar Republic from the left and from the right so radicals on both sides or extremists if you want to call them that um, so a brief, brief kind of overview it's like the right wing extremists are like the nationalists and they wanted like a return of a strong leader and um, like a government, an army, and kind of how it had been under the Kaiser. They were big fans of capitalism, valued like traditional values, and whereas extreme left-wing groups are uh, like socialism, communism, that kind of thing, um, opposed, opposed to the private ownership of land and business. So what's known as private property, which isn't actually like you can't have any possessions. It's not like they're going to take your toothbrushes. It just means that like the factories, that kind of thing, um, they're opposed to single people owning them. They'd want like a democratic ownership of with the workers owning that thing. I've explained that all right. So, um, yeah, ex in the 1920 election, extreme, June 1920, extreme left and extreme right wing parties had around 20% of the vote. Um, yeah, also, it's important to go over the main party of the Weimar Republic. So there's the KPD, who are the Communist Party. Communist Party, or obviously they're going to be an extreme left party. The SPD are the Social Democrats. They're moderately left. There's the DDP, who are the Democrats, who are also moderate left. And there's the ZP, who are the Centre Party. So they're just like slap bang in the middle. <laughs> I'm getting some opinions of these parties in hand gestures from Byron. <laughs> some of them are still around today, by the way. Yes. Uh, the SPT is still yeah. going. Sorry. <laughs> There's the DVP, who are the People's Party, which is uh, moderate right. And then we've got the DNVP, who are the National Party, who are right. And then you've got the NSDOP, who are the Nazi Party. <laughs> Getting some big boo signs from Byron there, <laughs> who are obviously extreme right. They're actually, economically speaking, there, there's some... Yeah, they're not really... They're, they're, they're beyond left and right. Yeah. Because... Um, oh, well, we're... that's quite a lot about fascism is beyond left and right. Mm. But I feel like that's a whole other debate. Oh, yeah. For the terms of... For the sake of your GCSE, the Nazis are extreme right. Uh, if you want right. to go into... Yeah, far right. If you want to go into further discussion, then you can start arguing that they weren't actually that right. Yeah. I mean, obviously they were wrong, but... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Um, yes. Oh, time for the next video. Got a nice video on the Spartacus revolt. Let's go for it. It's not playing. Let's try that again. Okay. That one's just not playing. Um, give us a second. <laughs> 
I don't understand why that's not playing. Is it not working? No, it's just both of the other ones that I queued up play fine. Right, uh, media source. Right, I should should take only a second to sort this out. I've had enough of technical problems for one day. It's in the folder called history videos. And then in another folder called videos. And then, Weimar and Nazi Germany, Spartacus Revolt. There we go. Open. It's the 6th of June 1920. A new election means that moderate parties only have 45% of seats in the new Reichstag. Extreme left parties had around 20%, and extreme right parties also held around 20%. It's not looking good. In fact, for most of the 1920s, moderate parties struggled to form majority coalitions while being attacked by extremists both sides. January 1919, the Spartacus Revolt. Let's step back up the two years. December 1918, Germany's Communist Party was first set up, the KPD. The KPD were backed by the Slovenian. They were funded. It wasn't long before they had 33 daily newspapers and 400,000 members, posing a serious threat to the moderate parties in power. One key group of KPD supporters was the Spartacus League, consisting of extreme socialists from the USPD, an independent socialist party based in Berlin. The Spartacus League named themselves after the head of the role in Agent Rose, Spartacus. Their leaders were Rosa Luxemburg, also known as Red Rosa, and Karl Knecht. So fast forward a month. It is the 4th of January 1918. Chancellor Ebert makes a bad move. He decides to sack Emil Eichhorn, the chief of police in Berlin. Eichhorn is popular with workers. Thus, thousands of workers take to the streets to protest. The Spartacists see an opportunity. This is a chance to unwind the government. They call for uprising and a general strike in Berlin. It works. On the 6th of January, 100,000 workers take to the streets to protest managing to take over the government's newspaper and telegraph offices. This terrible news for the government. There's a moment of panic. The German armed forces are weak from the war. They weren't strong enough to put down revolt alone. Luckily, Ebert had an idea. Back in November 1918, thousands of soldiers had been released from the army, returning home to Germany, but keeping their weapons. Many soldiers were right wing with strong up the communists. Ebert ordered Dixwell officers to organise these soldiers into Freikorps units, paramilitary groups. By March 1919, the Freikorps numbered around 250,000. As the revolt grows, Ebert turns these Freikorps from the rioters. Most of the workers are unarmed, rendering no match for the Freikorps. By the 13th January, the rebels have finally been driven off the streets. Three days later, on 16th January, Luxembourg and Liebknecht, the leaders of the Spartacus League, are caught and arrested by the cops, meeting their gruesome mess. Liebknecht is arrested and shot, whilst Luxembourg is struck on the head with a rifle butt, shot in the head, and her body leads to the canal. For the moment, the communist rebellion had been repressed. January 1919, Spartacus wrote. Thanks for watching. It would also be appreciated if you took the time. Oh, um, are you still muted? Okay. Right, we're not muted anymore. All right, everyone okay. can hear what we're saying. Hello, Good. everyone. Well, I will save that for later. <laughs> right, so we've done the Spartacist revolt. Poor Rosa Luxemburg is now dead. RIP. Now for our challenge from the right, the Fry Corps. Um. Wait, actually, there we go. The cat pooch. So this is our like the, the right wing uprising that occurred, the big right wing one. Um, so in by nineteen the Freikorps, as you saw, they'd been like brought in by Ebert's government to try and put down the Spartacus revolt. And then by nineteen twenty, Ebert's government were struggling to control the Freikorps. So in March nineteen twenty, Freikorps units near Berlin were due to be disbanded. So many of them were like, Oh no, we're going to be unemployed. So like, what can we do about this? How about we turn on the Republic? So 5,000 armed men marched on Berlin. Ebert then ordered General Siegt. 
how we're going to pronounce it. Seat. The head of the Reichswehr, which is like the German army, to resist the rebels. Um, General Seat told Ebert that the Reich Reichswehr does not open fire on Reichswehr. So that meant that the rebels were soon able to gain control of the city. So suddenly the city's in control of the uh, Reich Ops. Um, they put forward a right-wing politician, Wolfgang Kapp, as a figurehead leader and declared a new government in Germany and they invited the Kaiser to return from exile. The real government, in fear of their lives, then fled to Weimar and then on to Stuttgart. That's probably, it's probably more like Stuttgart. I don't know. I need to stop worrying about pronunciation because I'm just never going to get it right. <laughs> Before I do videos, I have time to go on to like Google Translate or something and get a vaguely okay pronunciation. You should learn um, IPA, the uh, was a phonetic alphabet thing, because mm. I put like how to pronounce yeah. words on the Wikipedia page. Oh, Not suggesting you. Just anyway, Wikipedia. yeah, let's just stop that one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so the actual government encouraged passive resistance, and they urged people to strike and to just generally not cooperate. Many workers obliged because they quite a lot of workers were quite socialist and they didn't really want to see the return of the Kaiser, so they were like, "We'll resist." Um, so essential services like gas, electricity, water, transport in the city they all ground to a halt. And after four days, Cap realised that he couldn't govern and fled. Cap was then caught and put in prison, where he later died, and the rebellion collapsed and the Weimar ministers returned. And then, just generally, throughout this time period, so 1919 to 23, there's a lot of political assassinations as well, as well as these uprisings. So, like, 1919, Hugo has one of um, Ebert's, like, Council of the People's Representatives was murdered. Um, Matthias Erzberger, who we'd seen earlier, uh, who signed the armistice, he was shot and killed in August 1921. There's a whole list here of them. Someone was machine gun to death in Berlin. Nice. Uh, in total, between 1919 and 1922, there were 376 political murders. So there's a lot of political murders going on here. Um, yeah, Most victims were left-wing or moderate politicians. Uh, not a single right-wing murder was murderer was convicted and executed, whilst ten left-wing assassins were. This is because judges were sympathetic to the right-wing and even undermined the Weimar Republic in courts. And because of all this violence, many parties chose to hire armed men to guard their meetings, and they would often recruit unemployed ex-soldiers for this. So, for instance, the KPD had a private army with a Rotfront Kampfer, which means Red Front Fighters, and then, like, the DNVP had the Stahlhelm, Steel Helmets. Um, and there's... Oh, I love this. The SPD had the Reichsbanner Schwartz Rot Gold, <laughs> black red gold flag. <laughs> That's just a, such rolls off the tongue. Um, yeah. So even though the political armies were there for protection, their presence would often cause violence as well. So basically, everything was violent in relation to politics. And then there's the French occupation of the Ruhr, which then went and didn't help things at all. So, Germany's government were bankrupt, basically, and all its gold reserves had been spent during the war. And then the treaty with the reparations meant that, like, lots of their wealth earning areas had been taken away. So, Germany's in a really terrible financial situation. Um, Germany couldn't, so they couldn't pay their reparations. So, they asked for reductions, but these reductions were refused. And France, in particular, needed Germany's money to pay off their war debts to the USA. By 1923, Germany just flat out couldn't afford to pay reparations anymore. Um, and in December 1922, they'd failed to send coal from the rural coal fields to France, as had been agreed by the treaty. So in January 1923, France sends a load of troops into the industrial area, which is the Ruhr, um, or of the Ruhr. They confiscated manufactured goods, raw materials, and industrial machinery, so basically anything of any worth. And the German government were like, did their typical thing of going, passive resistance, this is how we do it. So they encouraged workers to strike, etc. 
Um, the people obliged because they didn't like France. <laughs> and there was even some sabotage of like equipment, that kind of thing. The French arrested the people who tried to obstruct and they brought in their own workers. The Germans didn't like the French, so many... Um, did, yeah, the Germans didn't like this happening. And then many Germans weren't very happy with the Weimar Republic as well because they failed to resist the French because they were like, well, surely just send in the army, sort it out. But realistically, the French massively outnumbered the Germans. So the French army had like 750,000 and obviously the German army had been limited to 100,000 because of the treaty. Around 80% of Germany's coal, iron and steel reserves were in the Ruhr. So this is quite a big problem for Germany and its debts increased along with unemployment, goods shortages, things not going well. And then we have hyperinflation. <laughs> so just really, really not going well. Oh, um, I forgot to bring it with me tonight, but I've got a 1 million and 2 million mark. Oh, Bang, that's I, a shame. I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Stick it on Twitter yeah. at some point. God, was that, Go follow me on Twitter at a long time ago underscore U Y T. <laughs> It's the social media that I use because you can do it from a laptop. Anyway, so where well, you've now got a goods shortage, this caused high rates of inflation. So inflation is where like the amount of stuff you can buy with say like one unit of money. So like say a pound, the amount of stuff you can buy with one pound becomes less. And so like prices become more. So that's like inflation. It's like the worth of a bag of flour, for instance, would be like the bag of flour would have a bigger price, even though it's like still got the same worth as it worth as it did before. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so yeah, there's a high rate of inflation going on. The government needed money to pay off their debts, and unemployment and failing factories meant that they were receiving less money from taxes so they only had one quarter of the income that they required so Germany was like boom we've got a genius idea why don't we print more money that'll get around the problem so the government had like 300 paper mills and 2,000 printing shops dedicated to printing more banknotes <laughs> it's like why <laughs> and um, initially great yeah we've just printed more money so we can pay off our debts. But then obviously inflation got worse and even worse. And the more like prices rose, the more money was printed, which made the prices rise again. And this became like absolutely extreme inflation, which is known as hyperinflation. So in 1919, the cost of a loaf of bread was one mark. By 1922, the cost of a loaf of bread was a hundred marks. And by 1923, the cost of a loaf of bread, loaf of bread was 200 billion marks. <laughs> and that's why you don't print more money. <coughs> it's all, yeah, whoops. Whoops. So, obviously, <laughs> when your loaf of bread costs 200, 200 billion marks, <laughs> it's kind of difficult to live in the normal way, so people had to, like, pin money to letters or stamps. Um, became useless uh, they like had to carry money in baskets and wheelbarrows many workers were paid twice a day so that they could just like rush out and go and get stuff before the prices rose even more some shops even refused to take money and they were like gotta, gotta, gotta pay us in stuff and then some people would just like raid the shops loot them because they just couldn't afford the food because inflation hyperinflation got that bad everyone was suffering from shortages German marks became worthless for importing goods uh, in 1918 one pound of foreign goods was worth 20 marks November 1923 one pound of foreign goods was worth 20 billion marks um, so yeah foreign suppliers uh, refused to accept German marks as payments because you can kind of understand why so it meant like imports dried up so the good shortage became even worse because they just couldn't buy stuff with their currency uh, people who had savings lost all their savings because suddenly their savings were worthless 
Um, whereas people with loans actually benefited because the value of the money they owed back went down. But obviously the value, value of the money they'd taken out also went down. But um, So quite often people would like hoard up goods and sell them for massive pro profit as prices went up. Um, and foreign visitors, obviously, they're, like, their money's suddenly worth loads in Germany. Um, yeah, didn't look very good for the Weimar Republic. And yeah, so they suddenly they'd had these two uprisings and now they've got hyperinflation. Um, yeah. So, oh, I've just been asked to interrupt and explain why hyperinflation was a benefit to oh. some people. So obviously if all the money is suddenly <coughs> worthless, then obviously if you're being paid, then that's bad. But and if you've got savings and you're pretty out of luck there too. The thing is, is that if you had loads and loads of debt, which plenty of people did, and plenty of people do now, suddenly it would be worthless. I did just say that. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can you, you Oh well. I live in my own world, I'm You can live sorry. in your own world. <laughs> It's okay, you're, you're looking at the chat, keeping an eye on that. I am basically a senile <laughs> old man. <laughs> Maybe I just didn't say it very well. In my head I said it, at least. Oh, I'm so sorry. Right, yeah. Anyway, that brings us on to 1.3, which is a video. Stresemann's strategy. Like, let's hope this video works. It's August 1923. Stresemann has just been appointed new chancellor and secretary of Weimar Germany. Three months later, in November, Stresemann resigns as chancellor, but remains foreign secretary. He hopes by stability economy and regaining respect for Germany and foreign affairs, Germans will feel more content with the Weimar Republic. In turn, he hopes this will lead to more support for moderate parties and reduce support for extremists. 1923-29 Stresemann's Strategy the first step in Stresemann's strategy is bringing an end to hyperinflation, which he does through the establishment of the Rentenmark. In November 1923, he sets up a new, state-owned bank, the Rentenbank. This bank issues a new currency, the Rentenmark. The supply of this new currency is strictly limited, and its value is tied to the price of gold. Furthermore, the Rentenmark is backed by German industrial plants and agricultural land, meaning the currency has real value. In August 1924, the control of the Rentenmark is given to the Reichsbank, a newly independent national bank. The currency is renamed the Reichsmark and is backed by Germany's gold reserves. Finally, the German people can trust German money again and hyperinflation is brought to an end. This makes way for Stresemann's next work, the Dawes Plan. In April 1924, Stresemann agrees to the Dawes Plan. The plan has come about as the Allies have asked an American banker Charles G. Dawes, to resolve Germany's non-payment of reparations. The plan involves temporarily reducing reparations to £50 million per year. US banks are to give huge loans to German industry. Between 1924 and 1930, these loans amount to $25 billion. Moreover, Stresemann calls off passive resistance to the French occupation of the Ruhr, and reluctantly, they agree to leave. The German economy begins to recover, benefiting both workers and the middle class. Between 1923 and 1928, industrial output doubles. Employment, trade and income from taxation also increase. The German people are reassured and the Republic is strengthened again. However, extremists are furious at Germany agreeing to pay reparations again, and also at the fact the recovery of Germany is now dependent upon American loans. In 1929, further progress is made by Stresemann, with the Young Plan. The plan is put forward by a committee, headed by American banker Owen Young. The reparations debt is reduced from £6.6 .6 billion to £2 billion, and Germany is given a further 59 years to pay it off, meaning the debt now stretches out until 1988, and the payments to remain at £50 million a year. Lower reparations mean lower taxes for German people. Thus public spending power is released, giving a boost to the economy, and consequently to employment. A referendum in 1929 sees 35 million Germans vote in favour of the Young Plan, which is around 85% of voters. And, in 1930, the French agree to leave the Rhineland. However, not only does Stresemann oversee major economic improvement, 
but he also oversees a recovery and foreign relations, the first step in which is the Locarno Pact. On the 1st of December 1925, the Locarno Pact is signed. It's a treaty between Germany, Britain, France, Italy and Belgium, and it has been agreed on equal terms with Germany, rather than imposed. Under the treaty, Germany accepts its new 1919 border with France, and France promises peace with Germany. Moreover, the Rhineland is to be permanently demilitarised, and the five powers agree to open talks with Germany about joining the League of Nations. This makes war in Europe much less likely, and, in 1926, Stresemann is awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Germany's treatment as an equal sees a boost in German confidence in moderate parties and the Weimar government. The next important step is the German entry into the League of Nations. At the end of the First World War, the Allies had founded the League of Nations. They're a body who discuss ways to solve the world's problems without resorting to war. In September 1926, Stresemann successfully persuades the other powers to accept Germany as a member. They're given a place on the League of Nations Council, who make the most important decisions of the League. This is a further boost to moderate parties in Germany. The final piece in Stresemann's strategy for foreign relations is the kellogg briand Pact. In August 1928, Germany and 61 other countries sign the kellogg briand Pact. It's a promise not to use war to achieve foreign policy aims, and is the work of two French and US foreign ministers. It shows that Germany is now included in the main powers, not dictated by them, and this further improves support for the Weimar government. By removing the hardships of everyday people through improving Germany's world status, Stresemann had successfully reduced support for extremists. In May 1924, extremists held 40% of seats and moderates 50%. By May 1928, extremists held 28%, and moderates 58%, a dramatic improvement for Stresemann. Furthermore, in 1925, President Ebert had died and was replaced by Paul von Hindenburg, a former field marshal of the Kaiser's army. This had served to reassure the middle classes and had given the Republic a strong figurehead, further strengthening the Weimar government. However, this stabilisation is rapidly undone as on the 3rd of October 1929, Stresemann dies of a heart attack. Within a month, the Wall Street crash occurs, and the Great Depression means Germany is thrown back into hard times. 1923-29, Stresemann's Strategy Thanks for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe... Okay. We're back. We're alive. Hello everyone, did you enjoy that? Hopefully you did. Um, right, the recover... the recovery? The recovery of the Republic. So, we've done Stresemann's strategy, we've done all of this, Ooh. there's a lot of stuff we've done here. Okay, right, actually, we're on to changes in society, that's a whole little chunk of the thing covered in one video. Yeah, I noticed that changes in society seems to play a lot bigger role than it used to. Yeah. Um, what was the, the previous one like? So back when I did it, all the way back in... Old spec. Old spec, yeah, what was that, 2015, 2016? Jesus, huh? 2016. World oldest man. Um, yeah, when we did it, the focus was mostly on pretty much everything you've said at the beginning, but stretched out and with more detail. And then some foreign policy stuff and society after Hitler took power. So no real framework for yeah. how liberal Weimar had come to. Interesting. Yeah, it was a bit of a mess. It might have been my teacher in fairness, but you know. <laughs> That's a different story. <laughs> We were two months behind. <laughs> um, yeah, so... By, uh, in 1924, over 4% of the total possible workforce was unemployed, and then there were gradual improve improvements. So in 1926, there were 2 million un unemployed, 28, 1.3 million unemployed. Um, the 1927 Unemployment Insurance Act uh, charged a, a lot of, basically all the workers, 3% of their wages, and then in return they got 60 marks per week in unemployment sickness benefits if they fell out of work. So they've got a kind of benefit system going there. Um, the length of the working week shortened from 50 hours to uh, 46, I think, yeah. And real wages rose, rose by 25% from 1925 to 29. So things were on the up for the workers in this, like, 
middle of the 1920s period. Then housing wise, by 1923 there were a shortage of one million homes in Germany. Um, in 1925 a 15% rent tax was introduced to fund building associations and 1925 to 29 private companies built 37,000 new homes and new building associations in that time built 64,000 new homes. So there was still a housing shortage by 1928 but it had eased quite a lot because new homes had been built. Um, in 1920, the Pen Reich pension law meant that pensions were paid through the 1920s to all of the like 750,000 war veterans and war widows and parents of dead servicemen and also the number of students in higher education went up. So quite a lot of things on the up here. Um, for, the, for women there was a, a big change here. Feminists will be, be happy. <laughs> <laughs> that's good yeah so um women were given the right to vote which is a good thing in my opinion i mean it's a good thing <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's up for debate is it there are some people who still think it's a bad thing but i think we should just yeet them from society <laughs> right, so yeah women were given the right to vote under the new constitution and um Con and as a result of their efforts during the war, they were treated as equals. The turnout of women vo voters was high, female voters were at 90%. And by 1932, in 1932, 112 women had been elected to the Reichstag. So almost 10% of the Reichstag members were female, which is pretty impressive that considering impressive. the time. Yeah. Yeah. We were like the Weimar Republic one. was pretty progressive. Oh, yeah. Like and then everything went wrong. Mm. Well, I mean, when you look at the, what do you call it, the sort of progress in terms of, like, rights and equality and that sort of thing, it's the sort of modern-day Germany has only really caught up to where it got up to mm. in the last sort of 20, 30 years. I always so, feel like it was too progressive for its time. But again, yeah. that's another that's, a, that's another thing to talk about opinion, separately. not fact. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you can write that in one of your essays and that will... Can they give opinions at this uh, There's a level of opinion that you can stick in. I see. Like, how far do you agree... Because we were always old spec. Yeah. We were always told. Basically, state facts. You can't have an opinion. <laughs> yeah. Be a human parrot. Yeah. Also, so the Constitution stated that women had equal rights as to men, and marriage was an equal partnership, and women should be allowed to enter all professions on an equal basis as a man. Um, during the war, men, uh, men hadn't, had they'd been at war. So women went into work. So by 1918, 75% of women were in work, uh, often doing jobs previously done by men. However, by 1925, only 36% of women were in work, because obviously at this point, there's no more war going on. Um, unfortunately, women weren't treated as equals in the workplace, despite Article 109, which had been that one that said everything was equal, I think. And then, um, in jobs where men and women did the same work, women were on average paid 33% less than men. And cultur culturally, even though not legally, women were expected to give up work once they were married. So fewer women entered higher status professions and um, generally it's things like, though there were lots of like part-time jobs in shops and offices, that kind of thing. that women would often move into and then uh, in some of the more liberal professions such as ed education and medicine women made more progress uh, yeah many of these advances made by women were often met by opposition and negative negative feelings unfortunately um, there was a lot of hostility to double earners which was where you had like both people in a married couple bringing in money And then, um, also, the 1920s brought a lot of financial independence to women. So, especially young ones. Then many of these women became new women, which um, these women would be like women who'd buy more clothes, they'd go out more, express their independence through their behaviour. So, like, cut their hair short um, to show their liberation, wore more makeup, jewellery, and revealing clothes. And they'd, like, smoke and drink and all that kind of stuff that would have been majorly disapproved of at the time. 
they were like less interested in marriage and families and took advantage of the liberal sexual attitudes that had developed during the war so yeah again things that society at the time would have disapproved of quite a lot and many like mostly married women felt like this growing independence of women was like a threat to society and um they thought i was like no you should be focusing on motherhood family and housekeeping that type of stuff and also this new independence led to a falling birth rate so uh, 1928 there were 128 live births per a thousand women by 1925 this was 80 so quite a sharp fall in the birth rate and then a rise in the divorce rate as well as you'd expect with more independence for women this kind of caused a bit of the divide in society so some women felt completely liberated by these new freedoms and others found this expecta expectation for them to change intimidating because they're like we've always been in this way i don't know how to act outside of this way um and some men uh thought accepted the changing role of women and others felt that this was like inappropriate and a threat to society and the like felt like it was a threat to men um or threat to the role of men and again this whole argument that women should have focused on being mothers and wives was quite common throughout like conservative type views and like married people older people generally as well um yeah some people even blamed the economic instability of the 1920s on women upsetting the labor market <laughs> gotta blame women for everything <laughs> <laughs> yeah so there were some cultural changes in the Weimar Republic uh, I mean that is a cultural change in terms of women but there was like a kind of blossoming culture so there was like a surge in artistic and cultural energy as it's put here woo and so the restrictions that the Kaiser had and pre-war censorship ended so obviously more freedom of expression new constitutional freedoms like freedom of speech in the law again helps this like we can do what we want and it's gonna be okay we're not gonna be stuck in prison for it how much does it talk about german art during the sort of final period uh, quite a lot actually oh good good so we'll get to uh, bauhaus and german expressionism and... yes yes oh my god we got an, an right. art history fan yeah. over here art history fan. Well, even though i'm the one that takes art a level oh yes exactly yeah. Uh, is this my film <laughs> filmmaker background coming out here? All oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. Also, economic recovery after 1924 with Stresemann uh, helped to finance the arts. Um, people were looking at new ways to explore arts. Actually, an interesting thing generally in art as a worldwide thing, um, where you'd had the camera was now a thing. Once the invention of the camera became a thing, art moved away from trying to look as realistic as possible like on a, a global scale and so that hence in like the 1920s you've got some quite wacky art movements um yeah so new objectivism was the idea that art should be should show life as it really is not just as a romantic view of the world so you get these kind of pieces of art previously where they'd like uh made everything look as good as it is uh, good as it like like kind of like instagram and how people big themselves up on instagram but instagram with like paintings etc and then there's modernism which is the idea that art should be embraced the future and see like beauty in cities and in industry and like technology and then there's expressionism so the idea that arts should reflect the thoughts and feelings of the artist not just showing things as they exactly looked in real life and then there's the uh, how did you pronounce it the uh, what? The 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 the, 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 the 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 Bauhaus. Bauhaus. There we go. The Bauhaus movement, which was uh, a style of design, which influenced all areas of art. So like not just painting, but like sculpture and stuff like that. And it was developed by the Bauhaus, which was a design college in Berlin, mm -hmm. under a dude called Walter Gropius. Mm -hmm. And. You look like you want to say something about oh, that. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. About to, like, fanboy about art. <laughs> so the government gave support grants to art galleries, theatres, orchestras, museums, libraries, everything to just 
promote rich culture. Um, yeah, it's got some examples of different paintings here, but I don't think you really need to. Well, you might. Well, oh, sorry. Know them. Um, I'm thinking more about film. I don't know if German expressionism comes up as a. But, oh, we're about to get onto the paragraph okay. about cinema. We got a right. bit about okay, architecture good. first. Okay, cool. Um, um, yeah, so some architects, uh, such as Erich Mendelssohn, were influ influenced by the Bauhaus movement. Um, yep, there's a. I mean, it's it's just giving examples here. So like, um, and then there's cinema. So films became popular like worldwide throughout the 1920s um some german films were quite in innovative um so for instance there's the cabinet of dr caligari which is one of the world's first horror films byron likes it's it. like one of the best films ever i've Probably never seen it one of my like definitely top five okay watch maybe it. i should see it i think it's on this public domain horror is a bit scary it's not really horror it's more surreal Okay. Because of course, you know, on a more global scale, surrealism was big at this time yep. as well. So, yeah, I love it. Um, the Weimar period was just great for cinema. <laughs> yeah, everything else, you know. But, but good, good films. But yeah, Toxic Caligari, Metropolis, good times. Yeah, had. Metropolis is the next in the next bullet point. Oh, and um, uh, different from the others. If you're a real sort of, I guess that's more niche but yeah yeah good times good times were had yeah so there's a government funded agency the ufa which financed films such as metropolis um and germany's first sound film was made in 1930 by 1932 there were 30 38 i can't pronounce 3800 german cinemas showing films with sound um there was a bit of opposition to this like culture so left-wing opposition such as the KPD suggested that money shouldn't be spent on extravagance when working people needed help, and right-wing opposition such as the Nazis said the changes undermined traditional word German culture. <laughs> that brings us on to key topic two, Hitler's rise to power. So there's the early development of the Nazi party, so I need to... I haven't... I haven't flick through the textbook at pace with where I've been like I did last stream yep so in, uh, the very first Nazi party meeting at this point they were called the DAP was uh, in February 1919 and then the first like um, first meeting that had been attended by Hitler with the Nazis was like, had 23 people in it so they were a minuscule party at that time oh does it say why he was there? Um, yeah, it was because of. It does say it. I can't mind where it was, but it was like he was meant to be guarding the meeting, and then yeah, well, he's he there sort of to spy. I think that's what we were taught in the old back. All oh, right, we were taught that he was just meant to be like guarding it, I keeping see. an eye on it. History may have changed. Who knows what? <laughs> I, I I could read the textbook and find what it says, but I can't be bothered. Cool. Um, yeah. Within two years, Hitler had taken control of the DAP. And there were like five parts to his takeover, so like party policy, Hitler's own personal appear, appeal, he was kind of quite a charismatic guy, um, party organisation, party leadership, and the SA. So in January 1920, Hitler became head of party propaganda, and um, I've written infed, that makes no sense. Infed? I don't know what I meant when I wrote that, but um, he and... Oh, in Feb, that's what it's going to have Feb, been. Yes. Like February. February. Yeah. So he and Drexler, who had been like the original founder of the party, wrote the 25 point programme, which basically outlined all of the things for the DAP. Um, things like their anti Semitism, that kind of thing. Is this the 25 yeah. point plan? Yeah. That's what I just said. Is it? Oh, good. <laughs> it's impressive how, no offence, I just switch off. <laughs> so rude it is rude i feel really bad <laughs> you should do <laughs> no i should do that it's terrible i'm sorry so, um have you got all 25 points no we no. only have an extract of the 25 points oh. got point one two three four seven nine seventeen twenty two and twenty five i see so the top 10 i don't know why not just not important them? 
You'd think. There's even a little bit of space at the bottom of the page. They yeah. could have got in at least two other points. For shame, at Excel, for <laughs> shame. But yeah. Yep, yeah, so in January 1920, the DAP set up a permanent office in Munich, and they changed their name to the NSDAP, and adopted the swastika and the Nazi salute. So the NSDAP, short for that, is the Nazis. And that's how I'm going to refer to them, because it's uh, less of a mouthful. What? Yeah, the Nazis? Yes. Okay. What, not the Nuzdab? Nuzdab. Nuzdab. That sounds more Russian than German at that point. <laughs> mm. um, so yeah, by 1920, new member, the new members had brought in enough funds that they were able to buy a newspaper, which was called a thing that... Volkischer oh, oh, Feuerwache. Let's see. But I, I've that? missed out some of the dotty things because oh, I was I typing quickly. Yeah, I was going to say, you and your lack of umlauts. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't do any language GCSEs. No, well, I'm I a didn't. failure at language. I've not even done any official language stuff. Get on my level. Okay. <laughs> What's that? People's newspaper, right? Um, People's Observer, if I remember correctly. People's Observer. Yeah, that might make more sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. Right. So, um, in July 1921, Hitler forced a leadership contest, and he won. So, Drexler's no longer the leader, Hitler becomes the leader. To support his position, he surrounded himself with supporters. So, um, yeah, so there's like Rudolf Hess, who's a wealthy academic who became Hitler's deputy, Hermann Goering, who pops up a little bit. Um, actually, all of these dudes pop up a bit. <laughs> He's um, like, he'd been a First World War fighter pilot. There's Julius Streicher, who's um, a publisher. A publisher who founded another Nazi new newspaper, so yeah. And then there's Ernest Fromm, who's Ernst Fromm even, who's um, like an ex army officer and who was popular among ex soldiers. Um, 1921, the SA was formed, so they're also known as the Brown Shirts. There is a long word for them, but we'll roll with SA. Oh, the SA. And they're a paramilitary group who are like basically the Nazis' private army. And uh, they were often like ex-soldiers or students recruited from unemployed people. There's a big overlap between the FICOR and SA, right? Uh, probably. I mean, never the same never sort of people. I could be wrong. Yeah. Sounds like the same sort yeah. of people. Yeah. It would make sense if there was, yeah. but I don't think it explicitly says it anywhere in the textbook. And all I know is the GCSE textbooks. <laughs> At least I know two different ones. <laughs> So um, the SA would often like parade in the streets as a show of force. They'd control crowds at meetings. They'd be sent to disrupt opposition meetings, and they strengthened Hitler as they were expected to be directly obedient, obedient to him. Even though Rom was technically like the dude in charge of the SA. Mm -hmm. Their relationship was interesting. Yes. Um, they, for the people who care about this sort of thing. <laughs> um, Ernst Rom was one of the few people that addressed Hitler in the more informal way in the German language. Um, they had a sort of, for the time being, a sort of weird friendship <laughs> and got on. I did a terrible job explaining that, but you get my yep. point. Yeah, all right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so also, as um, many of the SA people were a bit crazy, I mean, you'd have to be to join oh, yeah. anything like that, Hitler selected some of his most the most trusted ones to become part of his bodyguard guard, which was known as the Sostrup, which is different to the SS, even though it's got like an S in the middle. Yeah. That's like shock troop. So in January 1922, Hitler persuades Nazi members to give up their right to elect their leader. I don't know why you would ever agree to that, but hmm. they did. So by that point, like Hitler's pretty in control of everything there. Yeah. Um, so, alright, we're on to the Munich Putsch. So, the Munich Putsch, there's some long-term causes for it, which is Deutschstoss, reparations, loss of Germany's colonies, and then there's the resentment against the Weimar Republic, and all of this type of stuff created support for nationalist parties like the Nazis. And also, uh, between 1919 and 1923, the Nazi had, had been growing in Munich, which was like they'd been founded, which was Munich was in the province of Bavaria. <laughs> and so Bavarian state leaders like Gustav von Kahr, uh, they weren't big fans of the Weimar government. And so they shared some of the 
Nazis' views and would often turn the blind eye the, to the violence of the SA. So by uh, 1923, the Nazis had 50,000 members, so they'd grown quite a bit. But very, yeah. yeah. And then there's like, like medium term causes, which is basically in Italy, they had the fascist party. And in 1922, Mussolini, who'd been leading the fascists, led his paramilitary organisation group in a march on Rome and successfully took over the country. So Hitler was like, sounds like a good idea. Yeah. And then short term causes, you've got like hyperfl hyperinflation, French occupation of the Ruhr. Hello. Breaking news. Did the Wi Fi go down? My device is still streaming. Uh, yeah, we're still streaming. Okay. okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good luck. You might just turn, turn the Wi Fi on and off again or something on your own device. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend stopping it now. Yeah. Right. Uh, Gotta love our Wi Fi. <laughs> yes, don't worry, v, we are still live, I believe. Okay, that's uh, good. I'm saying Music Gecko's latest comment. Okay. So, yeah, events wise for the putch. Um, it's also known as the beer hall putsch. Yes, uh, it's because it started in um, a beer hall. Beer hall by some. I yeah, but it also happened in Munich, so some people call it the Munich putsch. Um, like I, this textbook. I think the Munich putsch. I, I could be wrong here. I think the beer hall putsch is like the colloquial name given <laughs> to it over time. I think. Yeah. If you're reading about it in the paper at the time, they'd call it the Munich putsch. Yeah. So that's a thing. All right. Uh, so, oh, sorry. You got anything in? Anything interesting, interesting to input? Um, what was that? So I don't know how much you go into how the beer hall putsch fell or collapsed or what mm. happened. Yeah, a bit. Okay, but I'll let you do that. Okay, right. Sorry, I don't mean to keep jumping in. So um, on the evening of the 8th of November 1923, Bavarian state officials were meeting in a beer hall in Munich. And uh, so there was like Gustav von Kahr, who I mentioned just now, who's the leader of the state government. And he was like the state government of Bavaria and he was the main speaker and there were other speakers such as um, von Sizer who was the head of the Bavarian police and then von Losso who was the head of the German army in Bavaria so like important people in Bavaria basically the top brass of Bavaria the top society. dogs yeah um in this meeting, Hitler burst in, supported by 600 members of the SA, and he was brandishing a revolver. He shot the ceiling, poor ceiling, and... R.O.P. ceiling. The first I think there are worse crimes, victims. but yeah. Hitler did. Um, he shot them to the ceiling and declared that he was taking over the state of Bavaria and would from there march on Berlin and overthrow the Weimar Republic. Lundendorf, who was like a famous German army general and was like with Hitler he was going to become the head of the German army. And at gunpoint, Hitler de demanded that Carr, uh, Caesar, and... I sounded like Caesar. Yeah. Caesar. Did... Yeah, he said Caesar, that. I did. And uh, Lozo should support him. And they agreed, because they were at gunpoint. And that's what you do when you're at gunpoint. Oh, of course. Meanwhile, Rom and the SA took over the local police and army HQ. However... The main army barracks remained in control of the hands of army officers and the government. When Hitler was elsewhere, Lundendorf released the three people that he'd captured, so von Kahr, etc. Um, then at 5am the next morning, as Hitler gathered with his supporters to launch their attack on the streets, it became, became clear that the Bavarian leaders had withdrawn their support and had decided to put down any up uprising. Hitler hesitated, he's like, oh no, this isn't quite going to plan, but around midday he decided to go ahead anyway, and um, he was like, oh well we've got a thousand SA people and they had two thousand volunteers, so they marched on the town centre and um, declared Hitler the president of Germany. Most of the townspeople were like, eh, don't know what they're doing outside those strange people and the army stayed loyal to the government so Hitler was outgunned Hitler and Lundendorf then led a group of Hitler's shock troop to the main square where they were met by state police there was like a bit of a standoff one side 
It's not entirely sure which side opened fire and all hell broke loose. A bodyguard, Graf, threw himself in front of Hitler and was wounded by like half a dozen bullets. Goering was shot in the thigh. Hitler was dragged to the ground by his bodyguards with such force that his left arm was dislocated. It's going to be pretty forceful. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And um, 14 of Hitler's supporters and four policemen were shot dead. So, um, yeah, most of the rebels scrambled for refuge. One group ended, entered a school for girls and hid under a bed. <laughs> Love it. And was arrested for a completely different matter. <laughs> Lindendorf, Rom and uh, Streicher were all arrested. Goering was spirited away by supporters and went into hiding abroad. And then Hitler fled the scene in a car and hid in the house of a friend, Ernest... Uh, Ernst. Why do people have such German names in Germany? <laughs> God. <laughs> Hans Stag... St- Stangl. Ten miles south of Munich, uh, where he was later found, hiding in a wardrobe, and arrested on the 11th of November. <laughs> right. Consequences on Munich Putsch. So, um... Hitler and several other leaders of the Putsch were put on trial. London North was found not guilty, more because of the support of the judge rather than actual evidence. Um, Hitler and three others were found guilty of treason and sentenced to five years in Landsberg prison and the Nazi party was banned. Now, Hitler's time in prison led to what are known as the lean years of the Nazi party. So during his time in prison, he wrote his book, Mein Kampf, um, this showed, like, this book showcased what his beliefs were. Some pretty nasty things. Um, so he believed that the German race, which he called the Aryan race, was destined to rule the world. But he said that there was a Jewish conspiracy to undermine Aryan rule. Um, he said that Jews were, like, they planned to weaken the Aryan race by intermarriage and by taking over German industry and moderate political groups such as the SDP. He also expressed views um, from some of the early days of the Nazi party, like nationalism. Um, He wanted to revive the power of Germany. He openly spoke of the need for Germany to invade Russian land to the east of Germany to drive out the communists and provide land for German farmers to produce food and feed the German nation. He then kind of hints of socialism using the wealth of industry and land to benefit German working people not rich land owners and industrialists industrialists. so you can see where the debate that Hitler might not actually be super far right there's there's some of his economic policy isn't quite there but like culturally far right then there's totalitarianism which again is a culturally far right type thing Um, where throwing off democracy which Hitler believed was weak and instead putting power in the hands of the state and preferably having like one leader who ruled everything and then also he was big on traditional german values such as the strong family values like clear male and female roles um a strong work ethic christian morality and old style german art music and theater because apparently these things oh yeah you know modern art is all bad as we know there's no there's no skill in it then again I've been to the Saatchi Gallery. Have you? <laughs> yeah, the young British artists don't count. They are genuinely bad. And oh that's no, one the of phone's them ringing. <laughs> yeah, but it's Damien Hurst on the line. Oh, he disagrees. I hadn't thought about that. I don't know what to do. What if someone, like, comes on the answer phone? I think he wants... Oh. Oh no, it's answering. <laughs> I hadn't thought that we might come into that challenge. We shouldn't have left a phone in the same room. Oh no, that person's ringing again. Any chance you could grab that phone and just run it yes. out the room before someone says yes, something? Course. And your stream oh, right. has now seen me. Oh no. Right, um, it is wireless. Yeah, it is. Good, I've just broken it. Yeah. All right, off firing goes with the phone. So, yeah. The failure of the Munich Putsch persuaded Hitler that he couldn't rely on violence to take over. And so he realised that he needed a more organised Nazi party so he could infiltrate the democracy and, like, eat it up from the inside. So one of the things he did in his party reorganisation... Um, Alright, yeah, he was... So he was released from prison in on 20th of December 1924 um, to, like, 
this was just nine months uh, into his five year sentence um, the ban on the Nazis <laughs> was lifted and you failed to failed to stay off the screen but well. the ban on the Nazis was lifted in uh, February 1925 and Hitler was re- able to relaunch the Nazis at a meeting in Munich in February of that year and then yeah, that lenient treatment from the courts showed how they kind of like showed how lenient they were towards like right wing attacks on the Weimar Republic. Um, but yeah, this failure of this made Hitler think, okay, maybe we don't want to use violence. Maybe we want to eat it up from the inside, get into the democracy, the democratic way, and then destroy it. So one of the things he did with his reorganization of the party is set up. Uh, or like properly established the Nazi party headquarters so its headquarters was based in Munich because that's where they were from Philip uh, Bolher was appointed party secretary and Franz Schwartz was appointed party treasurer and they made sure that the Nazis were well organised and well financed the party itself was organised like a mini state with Hitler as the leader and departments for all aspects of government such as like finance foreign affairs industry etc and um as well as having like paramilitary arm the sa the party also had a women's section called the worm the german (laughs) women's order and a bit for the young people so uh, national socialist german students league was also created and then there was the hitler youth for the 14 to 18 year olds alongside a school pupils league so they had like everyone covered whoever you were you could join the nazis easy peasy even if you're a newborn probably probably yeah like a nazi crash <laughs> oh um yeah so they also helped to try and make their part organized it so it would work better on a national scale so they divided uh into regions, 35 regions, which is the same as the constituencies of the Weimar Republic, and they had what was known as a, a GO, that's how I'm going to pronounce that, and each, they had a leader for each one, which was like a Gulita, and, um, stop judging my pronunciation. I just can't see it on the screen. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yep. I'm going to say Gaul. The, yeah. Or Gaul. The were not appointed, but they were, like, Hitler relied on them making, like, pushing their way to the top. Just hit my elbow on the chair. Ouch. Um, and the idea behind that was, like, survival of the fittest type thing. You're going to get the best leader if they have to make their own way to the top rather than appointing them. So there are a couple of key, pro- key people there. There's, like, uh, Gregor Strasser and Joseph Goebbels, who were both Gorlitters And they also, there was, a, like, money was raised from wealthy industrialists. Paramilitary wise, by 1930 the SA had 400,000 members, so it was pretty big. Um, Hitler didn't trust the SA for a couple of reasons. Many storm- stormtroopers were like violent thugs and difficult to control. And whilst Hitler was in prison, the SA had become loyal to Ernst Fromm, its commander, rather than him. So he's not; he wasn't entirely trustworthy of them. So he took in 1925 two steps to tighten his control of his paramilitary forces first of all he replaced rom as leader of the sa and rom was forced to find work abroad until the return of the he returned to the nazi party in 1930 and then he set up a new party security group and he called them the schutzstaffel which was protection squad or the ss and um that was like they could um it was like smaller than the SA and its members were specially selected so that they could be trusted to act as Hitler's personal bodyguard um, and he then um, uh, initially the SS had been run by per- Hitler's chauffeur and bodyguard uh, Julius Schreck however after um, later on he actually quite quite soon after he replaced uh, Schreck with Heinrich Himmler, who is a person you've probably heard of. I hope you've heard of going into this exam. Yeah. Never know. And then by 1932, there were 3,000 members to the SS. So they were like the tight-knit, tight-knit one. And then 
another important thing to know about is the Bamberg Conference, which happened in 1926. So, in the industrial north of Germany, their, some of their Gauleiters had emphasised more the socialist part of National Socialist, which was like what the Nazi parties, NSDAP stood for, the NS, National Socialist. Um, and they'd been like, I think the socialist bit is good because we're in an industrial area with lots of workers and workers like socialism. Whereas others, like Hitler, had put more emphasis on the national bit. And so to try and sort out this divide, Hitler called a nas uh, Nazi national Nazi party conference in Bamberg, which was in Bavaria in 1926. Um, yes, so, here I am, page 57. Yeah, um, yeah, so, he allowed at this conference northern leaders like Strasser to put forward their views, but Hitler made his own views very clear. So he spoke for five hours, which is even longer than I've been speaking for. <laughs> so imagine what that's like. Um, and he made it seem that the socialist wing of the party were more like communists and that they were the enemy of the Nazis well, the communists were the enemy of the Nazis and Hitler also made effort, great efforts to win, o win Goebbels over to his side and as a result Goebbels abandoned Strasser's arguments and much to Strasser's disgust Strasser called Goebbels a scheming dwarf great insult So this conference had big impacts on the Nazi party. So Hitler's control of the party was now clear again. Um, Goebbels was promoted to Gauleiter in of Berlin as a reward, and Strasser pledged his loyalty to Hitler, but Hitler never really trusted him. And in 1934, Strasser was murdered during a clear out of Nazi leaders, because that's how Nazis like to clear out people. Um, the socialist principles of the Nazi party were weakened and that gave Hitler more freedom to adopt any policies he's liked. However, there was a limit to su support for the Nazis in this period. Um, so even though by 1929 the Nazi party was well organised, it only had 100,000 members. So um, Hitler had tightened his personal control over the party as well. So these are often described as the lean years and makes sense yeah so uh, the reasons for limited support Stresemann's like strategy had helped gain support for the general like moderate parties because things were going a lot better in the Weimar Republic in general um, no, generally there's two two boxes here for Stresemann he did a good job raising support for the Weimar Republic. Um, also, 1925, Paul von Hindenburg becomes president. He's an ex-field marshal of the German army, and so he was like a war hero, and he kind of created that figurehead for the Republic that the right kind of needed, so people were less likely to want to get rid of him and just stick with the Weimar Republic rather than going with the Nazis. And there was little support from the working classes, um, yeah, which isn't going to help the Nazi party grow. And consequently in this period the um, moderate parties did a lot better than extremist ones. Yeah, so in 1959 we have the Wall Street crash, which is not very good say it very very lightly. So in October, October 1929 share prices began to fall on the Wall Street Stock Exchange in New York, USA. Um, falling shares meant that people's investments fell in value and people were worried about losing money so they rushed to sell their share shares before the value of their shares fell further. On Black Ch Thursday, um, the 24th of October, 13 million shares were sold. This panic selling sent prices even lower, and then shares worth $20,000 in the morning were worth $1,000 by the end of the day's trading. So people were like worried that they were going to lose quite a lot of money. Within a week, investors had lost 4 
thousand million dollars. And this is what's known as the Wall Street crash. It had some quite big economic effects in Germany because German bankers were major invested investors on the US stock exchange. Um, so German people uh, rushed to withdraw their money as well. And um, have you got your thing from my laptop or something? No. No. Oh. Because not that like, literally every other device is not working. Anymore. That's probably because I'm using a lot of yeah. screen no power. Enjoy yeah. your no internet mm. time. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's me with my two live chat windows open. Oh my god. I am I'm destroying your internet. Um, I was going to say something, but I completely forgot what it was. Um, something. All right, I'll keep pushing forwards whilst you remember. Cool. So, um, yeah, people. Th this caused a collapse in German industry as like American banks wanted their money back so that they could pay the people withdrawing their money, and general economic collapse followed in Germany. Um. Oh yes, yes, I do remember what I was going to tell. Yeah. Um, if you have you got the live chat open? No. Okay. Well, I. I can't see the live chat. Of course you can't. So I sort of have to work as your, I guess, middleman. Yeah. man. Um, one word that's come up repeatedly. Kahoot. Kahoot. Oh yeah. Yeah. Should we do a kahoot after we finish the content? Could do. Could do. If people want to do a kahoot. Yeah. That would be good. I did mention a kahoot earlier in the time, and then I never got round to. Did you? Sorting cool. it out. Right. Well, this the chat, this could happen. It could happen. Breaking news, it could happen. Yes. But i got to blitz through this first. Yes, yeah, sorry. So I said I'm sorry. covering the whole thing, and yeah. I'm going to cover the whole thing, and I'm going to try and do it reasonably quickly. We're making progress. I've just hit a hole in my notes, but then there are some more notes later on. And I found I'm going faster where I'm hmm. not right. at the hole in my notes. Fair. Yep. Yeah. So unemployment um, obviously rose because there'd been economic collapse. Um, when banks were demanding their money back, like industries, farms had to scale back their production or even close, which meant that workers were made unemployed. Um, the economic crisis was worldwide. German companies had like sold their goods and uh, that that sold their goods abroad as like their business found that their sales fell and that made even more workers unemployed and then German workers who were unemployed became poorer and they couldn't afford to buy as much which meant that sales fell even further and companies had to make even more workers unemployed so it's just a big downward spiral um, in terms of it had quite a big impact on the people obviously so lots of people become unemployed um, Taxes were raised, unemployment benefits were cut. Um, people who had savings lost their savings, um, or savings in, invested in shares. Workers um, suffered again. Tax goes up. Um, homeless people as well. Many found that they could no longer afford to rent, so they became homeless. And shanty towns of makeshift houses began to spring up. Boredom turned to violence. Um, yeah, wasn't looking good. And there was this governmental failure to deal with the massive boom in unemployment. So Bruning, who was the chancellor, his pro proposition to like, he was like, okay, we've got unemployment, what should we do about it? He proposed higher ta taxes to pay for unemployment benefit, put fixed time limits on unemployment benefits to make them more affordable, which left neither side happy because the right and wealthy, like the right, right wing and wealthy people were opposed to higher taxes and the left wing uh, and like workers were uh, opposed to the benefit cap so neither side's happy in July 1930 this proposed policy was rejected um, Bruning found himself having to govern by decree as he couldn't get anything past the Reichstag and the failure of these parties to work together like exposed a big weakness in the system and um, even with Bruning, you like governing by decree, he still failed to solve the problem. And this whole idea of he's like governing by decree, and even these decrees are useless, and it completely undermines people's trust in the Weimar Republic. So there was this massive rise in support for the radicals. 
in 19, by 1932, the KPD was the largest communist party outside of the Soviet Union. Um, growing unemployment, falling wages, grew support for the KPD, and uh, wealthy people turned to the Nazis instead of the communists, um, because communists were like, we want to seize the means of production, which is owned by the wealthy people. Means of production being like factories, etc. The things that make the stuff that you need. Um, so suddenly in this later period, there's a big boom in support for the Nazis. First reason for this is Hitler's personal appeal. He's a strong leader, he's very popular. Um, he'd often like appear on, he took advantage of electoral campaigning, he'd appear on posters, he even like um, flew planes on one occasion with adverts on. Um, yeah, or something like that. And the Nazis also had funding from some very wealthy businessmen, which meant that they had lots of funding. The SA also helped uh, gain support for the German, uh, gain support from the Germans for the Nazi Party. So the uniformed SA made the Nazis seem organised, disciplined, reliable um, during this like economic and social turmoil and they made the Nazis look strong enough to control the unrest and stand up to foreign powers. The SA were also used to disrupt opposition parties. Um, the Nazis had a stronger private army than the communists, and um, yeah, so they had 400,000 stormtroopers by 1930 compared to only about 130,000, which is still a lot where the K in the KPD's Red Front fighters. And um, yeah, so like the 1930-1932 elections were pretty violent. It's like armed and uniformed SA stormed, like tore down opposition posters, intimidated, intimidated candidates, broke into their offices. Um, there was a clash uh, between the two in uh, Hamburg in like 1932, where 18 people were killed. So pretty nasty stuff. Um, yeah, so the Nazis appealed to big business owners because they were afraid of the communists. Um, yep, and also they like offered a chance to try and solve Germany's economic problems. So that got them quite a lot of financial support. They also had working class support. Um, the Nazis tried to seem like a party of the German working class. So like their name, the National Socialist German Workers Party, was obviously showing that they were trying to seem a party for the workers. Um, they had policies that appealed for the, to the workers, so um, they like promised work and bread on their posters. Um, yeah, however, m more workers preferred the communists. Um, and the Nazis never properly dominated the working class vote, even though they did get quite a lot of support from the working class. Um, they even had support from the middle classes, so the middle classes, um, they'd often own like land or businesses and they'd have savings. And the Great Depression had hurt the middle classes quite a lot, they'd lost like their savings or their pensions. Um, they were afraid of the communists, so they're like, we'd prefer the Nazis than the communists because the communists are going to come and take this, take our stuff. Um, many middle class people believed that there had been a moral decline under the Weimar Republic with all the like new women, drinking, sexual openness, and like the Nazis were all up for traditional values, so they were like, hmm, Nazis, we'll go with them. Um, farmers also. Uh, they didn't, they, um, yeah, so they, in the 25 point program, Nazis actually put forward confiscating all private land, and in 1928 this was changed. And the new policy said that private land would only be confiscated if it was owned by Jews, which reassured farmers, and they were like, we'd prefer that to the communists again because the communists would like redistribute land. Um, and so that meant that like Nazis gained 60% of votes in some rural areas, so they had quite a strong support from the farmers. And also they targeted stuff at young people. For many young people, the Nazi party were quite exciting. They had like colourful rallies, a big atmosphere, um, speeches, 
and they like seemed a bit more exciting than traditional parties and that enticed younger people and even uh, appealed to some women so at first many women didn't support the Nazis because obviously they were like traditional values and women liked their newfound freedom and liberation and uh, but the Nazis started putting out some propaganda that made special appeals to women so it like claimed that voting for the Nazis was the best for their best thing for their country and for their families and increasingly some women came to see this as attractive and also there was um, in a sense like they've provided unity so even though they targeted support from specific sections of society it, they also try to appeal to all groups as like a whole nation and that was like something for everyone so you can see why they gained quite a lot of support then we got onto the actual how Hitler became Chancellor which is a little bit crazy my voice is getting really tired now. Yeah, it is, I can tell. Um, you want me to get you some more water? Or? I don't know, I should have should have made more videos on the, the latest stuff. Yeah, yeah, I've noticed. See, compared to the last <laughs> stream where it's pretty much, well, it wasn't pretty much all videos, I'm just being rude. <laughs> I had more Saxon videos because I'm a bit of a Saxon nerd. Right. Yeah, note <laughs> for next year. Oh, yeah. More videos. <laughs> Right, so, um, yeah, 1932 began. Weimar Republic was crippled by economic problems, it says here. Um, so Heinrich Brüning's still Chancellor at this point. Uh, things are going wrong. Um, in the general election of 1930, the Nazi party won 107 seats in the Reichstag. Um, this was its largest ever number to that point, but only a small proportion of the 577 seats available. Um, yeah, but then, like, in January 1933, Hitler became Chancellor, so you can see how quite a small time period it was that suddenly the Nazis were able to take over and seize power. So in March 1932, Hindenburg stands for re-election. Hindenburg was the president, his term in office had uh, ended, and, um, yeah, so Hindenburg successfully won that uh no well he won the most votes but he didn't get over 50 percent of the votes so he got like 49.6 percent of the votes so he was pretty close but he wasn't there so he stood again in april 1932 for re-election because no candidate had achieved over 50 percent of the vote um hitler did a lot of campaigning to try and become president himself but it failed hindenburg ended up with 53 percent of the vote this time um, yeah, though actually Hitler did receive an increase in his share of the vote. Um, in May 1932, the Chancellor Brüning he resigns. However, um, yeah, so Hindenburg's election hadn't achieved stability. Re-election hadn't achieved the stability that they wanted. So uh, Heinrich Brüning resigns. Um, yeah, he took two stats which lost him all hope of support for uh, all hope of majority support in the Reichstag. First of all, he banned the SA and the SS, as there were genuine fears of civil war for, civil war breaking out on the streets, and he wanted to calm the unrest and and try and control the Nazis. He then announced a plan to buy up land from large landowners and use it to house the unemployed. So he's not done a good job raising support for himself there. Um, these two measures, like, united right-wing groups against Brüning. Um, obviously, the Nazis weren't happy with the ban of the SA and the SS, and the landowning classes didn't want their land being bought up. Um, even Hindenburg, who was a landowning conservative, was not happy at this. So, like, Brüning now had support from no one, so he resigned. Then von Schleicher... Schleicher? We'll, we'll go with that. I thought it was Schleicher. That Schleicher. I that might be right. I don't know. Music gecko? Uh, yes. <laughs> we need your help. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, so Kurt von Schleicher had, um, for quite a while, he was um, a high-ranking army general. He had been suggesting a new chancellor to Hindenburg. 
and he had been organising a coalition of right-wing supporters um, consisting of landowners, industrialists, army officers, and he chose a wealthy gentleman, an ex, and poli- wealthy gentleman politician, um, an ex-general, Franz von Papen, who was also a friend of Hindenburg, as the figurehead of this new coalition. They didn't have a majority in the Reichstag, as the moderate SDP, um, who were like slightly left, actually had the majority. Um, but von Schleicher persuaded Hindenburg that if the Nazis, uh, with their huge popular appeal, would support the coalition, it could govern without the Reichstag and using presidential decrees. This is completely against what the Weimar Republic was meant to be about, and again, just undermined the whole thing. And so the constitution yeah, intended that the chancellor should have the support of the Reichstag, but it, this like new government became was so undemocratic that it became known as the Cabinet of Barons. Um, Hitler agreed to support the coalition if the ban on the SA was removed. So they removed the ban and the coalition went ahead. On uh, yeah, so on that same day, thirtieth uh, of May, nineteen thirty-two, von Papen became chancellor. Um, yeah. And then in July 1932, there were Reichstag elections. Um, von Papen's government didn't get off to a good start, and it didn't particularly go any better. So there were Reichstag elections. Um, once again, the campaigns in June and July caused violence in the streets, mainly between like the Nazi and communist private armies. Um, about 100, th- 100 people are killed, 7,000 injured. Um, yeah. When the results ha- were announced, the Nazis had won 230 seats in the Reichstag, which was a spectacular result. They jumped from 18% of the vote in 1930 to 38% of the vote in 1932, and they were now the largest party in the Reichstag. Hitler demanded that Hindenburg sack von Papen and appoint him as Chancellor instead. Um, Hindenburg was a field marshal of the German forces during the First World War, and he did not like Hitler. In his eyes, he was a vulgar, jumped-up corporal, as he called him. And he refused to make Hitler Chancellor. Wise move. Um, and instead, von Papen hung on to office and called new Reichstag elections in November 1932, hoping that the Nazi support would fall. Nazi sp- so the seats in the Reichstag did fall to 196. So they were still the largest party, even though they were less of the largest party. Um... At this point, Schleicher... Oh. Sorry, we've just got a pronunciation okay. correction for Music Echo. Right, I want to say it's Schleicher. No, no, that's not right. You can hear it coming out and it's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Schleicher. Schleicher. Schleicher? Schleicher? Schleicher. Okay, we'll go with that. Schleicher. That sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, at this point, von Schleicher... Oh yeah, that sounds better. Schleicher. I mean, it might, be, might not be right, but it sounds nicer. He abandoned von Hafen. Oh, Schleicher. Schleicher. Okay. I think. He's on the Y. Schleicher. Okay, right. 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 And he told Hindenburg that if von Hafen stayed, the country would descend into civil war and the German army would be unable to keep control. So, reluctantly, Hindenburg told his friend to resign. December 1932, von Schleicher becomes Chancellor himself. Hindenburg was by now struggling to find a strong government, and he still refused to make Hitler Chancellor. Um, Von Schleicher told Hindenburg that the November election results showed that support for the Nazis was fading, and he told a visiting Austrian minister that her Hitler is no longer a problem, his movement is a thing of the past. Oh, how those words. Ooh. Yeah. Spoke a little bit too soon there. Um, in desperation, on the 2nd of December 1932, Hindenburg appointed von Schleicher as Chancellor. Did I just abandon all pronunciation? I think that you I have, but you did Sle- get a... Schleicher? Uh, Schle- Schleicher. Um, Schleicher. I mean, we you got a like... spot on a minute ago. Oh, right. But, um, yeah. I can't remember how I pronounced it a minute ago. <laughs> no, I can't remember. Sh- Schleicher. Schleicher. No, Schleicher. 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 I'm so embarrassing myself in front of these pe- these lovely people. <laughs> We've done like every single way you can pronounce <laughs> that word wrong. now. Well, the thing is, is we pronounce it wrong. 
I guarantee most teachers will pronounce it in a True. completely ridiculous way. I feel way like to... every teacher would have a different way of pronouncing it. Uh, we've got Schleicher. 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 Uh, from New York Echo. Okay. I wonder, I yeah, I, I'm just, I'm terrible at reading these sort of <laughs> things because I want to read it in the wrong way. All right. Anyway, so January 1933, Hitler becomes Chancellor. So von Schleicher's... Oh, Chance... Schleicher from someone else. Schleicher. I Everyone just really. has their own opinion on Schleicher. that. Well, I wonder if some of it is because, of course, Germans' yeah. accents are very different, True. region to region. So I don't know. If so you can just pick your own pronunciation. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. So uh, von von Schleicher, um, his <laughs> chan- destroyer, yeah. his chancellorship had no real political support. So with now he's had like Hitler and the Nazis against him, um, he was unable to govern. And he had no majority in the Reichstag and no support amongst the public. So von Schleicher, in the face of this, asked Hindenburg to suspend, suspend the constitution and make him head of a military dictatorship. <laughs> he said that the German... Like, there's no words for that. Top ten anime mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> he said that the German army would support him with armed force. Hindenburg, unsurprisingly, was like, no, no, we're not going to do that. Um... Rumours began to circulate about Schleicher's, Schleicher's plans for an army coup. On the 30th of January, von Papen told Hindenburg, if a new government is not formed by 11 o'clock, the army will march. A military dictatorship under Schleicher looms. Von pa- pa- Papen also gave Hindenburg a solution. Make Hitler chancellor and von Papen tri- vice-chancellor. This way... Hindenburg and von Papen thought that they could control all the decisions themselves and make Hitler a f- uh, use Hitler as a figurehead. Von Papen said that he had Hitler in his pocket and that within two months we will have pushed Hitler so far into the corner that he'll squeak like a mouse. <laughs> didn't quite work, did it, Papen? No, it didn't. Um, <laughs> it's the curb theme yes. ways. <laughs> Hindenburg finally agreed, and as a result, on the 30th of January 1933, Hitler was legally appointed the Chancellor of the Weimar Republic. From a political point of view, that's what, 14 years from complete nobody to head of the country. That's some insane career progression. Mm. Terrifyingly insane <laughs> career progression. Yep. Yeah, so Hitler, um, there were a few reasons for Hitler becoming Chancellor. Um, even though like Hindenburg had never supported, uh, never fully supported the idea of republic because he was a monarchist, um, yeah. Uh, I don't see where that bullet point was going. I don't know where I was going with that point, so I'm just going to abandon it. <laughs> von Schleicher and von Papen were right-wing conservatives who wanted to move away from government by parties elected for the Reichstag towards a stronger government controlled by wealthy industrialists and landowners um yeah so they had undermined by appointing the cabinet of barons they had undermined the republic oh i see where that first point was going now but yeah and also all three of them had underestimated hitler they thought they could control could control him Mm. but we all now know that no one could control hitler no that's (coughs) that was quite a uh foresight and i think even at the time that just seems like such a you know big risk just from any like any political point of view like, mm. or from any perspective giving ground to someone who already mobilises their own private army yep. not a good idea not a good okay, idea. I'm making kind of slow progress here mm. yeah how many hours have we been doing this now? Uh, nearly two nearly two, cool And how much further have we got? Uh, we've just got halfway <laughs> <laughs> I really I whizzed through the first chapter and this second yeah. one I've just gone so slowly through it I think because my voice is now dying yeah I mean I'd sort of take over for a bit but I don't know your notes very well and I'm terrified that I'm going to get to a point where I'm just going to get stumped and plus people are there so you... I don't know if people ever want, if want to swap over to Kahoot at some point and we just abandon it abandon it yeah yeah um, or if people just want to stick at it stick at it well should we give the chat a little referendum on yeah, the we'll have a referendum. Okay. Do you want to remain? Do you want to remain doing or the to book or to leave Kahoot and uh, Kahoot it up? Well, it wouldn't be leaving. No, we'd be all playing Kahoot together. That's true. Like the happy bunnies we are. Yes, 
be nice. Or like go on for a bit and then go on to Kahoot. Could do. I don't um, know. I, oh, I've got a... <laughs> a lot of people are liking the referendum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we officially have the referendum. Can You can't put a poll into a live chat, can you? No, you can't. That's a shame. Should I run a bus past their house and just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just make up something and put it on the side of a bus. <laughs> if it's on the side of a bus, it's true. We are getting one request, though, uh, from Sam yeah. Howard. Uh, key dates. Key dates. Now, I was going to say Ooh. that the textbook will have key dates at the front. Yes, it does. So, and most people are saying, Kahoot, this is actually quite a... Yeah, this isn't a 52 to 48. Okay, that's video. good. Um, if I... That's the key dates. Yes. So uh, if I brush over the key, key dates, dates... Yes. And key things. Cool. Um, and then, and then we'll, we'll move to, to Kahoot. Kahoot. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, how are we going to do it? Are we going to have the Kahoot come up on stream, or are we going to... What I'm thinking yes. is we um I will broadcast the like you know the questions yeah. screen yeah. over OBS. I'll cool. just use my phone separately. Cool. Tell cool. people what I'm called. Yes. Um we can we can have a bit of a yeah right. chat We've... as we kahoot we'll pick a kahoot together. Of course. Um actually I was gonna should I find one now? I think someone a while ago actually posted a kahoot. Um, yeah, if anyone's made any cahoots, yeah, if I we saw can one. trust them. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to do some link checking for me. Yes, Though actually, people can't see my screen currently, so no, no, we're all safe. We are all safe. Um, mm. Yeah, obviously, I would screen it before we actually do anything. Yeah. Um, yes. So, so uh, we're having some stream lag again. All oh, right. But um, I think this is part of the course at this point. Yes, I don't really know what to do about that because no. my internet is terrible. I like the fact that Kahoot Exit or Kexit has taken off. Kexit. Kexit. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so um, well, we covered the first uh, half of the stuff. Um, just a good test of my memory, actually. 1933, a lot of stuff happens. Hitler's appointed Chancellor. There's the Reichstag fire, which was a fire in the Reichstag which Hitler used to be like oh no emergency um, I think it was like the com there was a communist who was behind the yes, Reichstag uh, fire so Martin Van Der yeah he used that as an excuse to like yeah. go and like go in for the opposition and then there's the enabling law enabling act um, I'm trying to think what that was come on brain <laughs> it, it was the related to that was where he uh, con limited... increased control yeah, or something he... So limited control and also uh, imposed restrictions on the non-Nazi party MPs. Ah, so yes. the communists were officially banned, I think. So that's following the Reichstag. Yeah, part. that makes sense. And yeah. I think this is when he decided to ban trade unions as well. But I think that might have been separate Possibly. legislation. Yeah. So in 1933, he also asked people to boycott Jewish shops. Mm -hmm. um, the Gestapo, who were like their secret police, were established. And there was a concordat with the Catholic Church, which was where yeah, he this is made an later, agreement with... It says, still says that 1933. Oh, this isn't with burning anxiety, then. Um, yeah, that's where I think he made an agreement with the Pope that like yeah. everything would be Catholic and yeah. good as far as the Pope was concerned. And then in 1934, we have the Night of Long Knives, where he murders a load of fellow yes. Nazi leaders. Pretty much everyone that could have a good claim at taking Hitler's job suddenly <laughs> dies, including SA leader, or former SA leader, Ernst Rohm. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and then also in 1934, Hindenburg dies and Hitler becomes Fuhrer. Uh -huh. So Hindenburg was the president and Hitler was the chancellor. Hitler was like, hmm, right, Hindenburg's died now. I'm going to have a go at becoming president and chancellor at the same time mm -hmm. and he gave Führer was the name he gave to this yeah. and then in 1935 we've got Nuremberg laws passed mm -hmm. and my brain's just trying to remember what they were <laughs> these are the major restrictions most of the anti-semitic stuff ah, in yeah. law starts at this point so this is when uh, Jewish Germans were ba basically yeah. had their rights stripped away from them uh, in a very quick quick way yeah. um I think the right things like um, I'm sure it's like passports and rights of work and stuff like that start to get limited. I think that rings a bell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I would. I'll check and yeah. say. 1936. There's the Berlin Olympics, which um, was like I mean it was the Olympics, yeah, but then Nazis used it as a big propaganda PR thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is came oh. up in one of the questions last year. Yes. So yes. probably won't come 
up again this year, but mm-hmm. you never know. Uh, someone's also said in the chat that the um, Nuremberg Laws also affect his marriage stuff oh, right. and to do with intermarriage, which was one of the... I think that's something he established in hmm. Mein Kampf was destroying German oh, yeah. society, so he stopped that. And he wasn't a big involved. fan of any kind of mixing of no. types of people in a marriage. Um, yeah. And then in 1938, the last thing on this timeline here is Kristallnacht. Yes. Night of Broken Glass, where basically there was a big riot against Jewish people encouraged by the Nazis. And it was pretty nasty. And that's all of the things on this timeline. Uh, what, timeline. it just finishes it? It just, just fin- finishes there. Okay, so there's some things missing there. But... There are some big things missing on the timeline. Oh, of course. Uh, do you mind if I fill in a few blanks? You can fill in a few blanks. So, first of all, the relationship with the church and the Nazis was not particularly yep. positive. Um, the Catholic Church were particularly opposed to... They weren't opposed... Look, I just want to make clear that the Catholic Church at the time were not opposed to authoritarianism. They were opposed to Hitler in a rather specific sense. Because, of course, um, Mussolini was able to appease the Catholic Church in the late 20s. Um, Hitler did not bother with this. Uh, of course, Germany, important to note, is sort of, I think, split mostly Catholic Protestants. So there's, um, you know, a bit of both. But they really didn't like, obviously, the fact that the Nazis sort of were going against, you know, God's natural sort of order and that sort of thing. So in 1936, the Pope wrote a concordat, uh, concordat or definitely a memorandum, called With Burning Anxiety in English. Um, <coughs> uh, it was also written in German. How do you think I feel with my voice? Yeah, I've spoke for two minutes and I'm dying. <laughs> um, so With Burning Anxiety was a strong condemnation of the church. Uh, uh, no, whoops. Strong condemnation of Hitler <laughs> and his sort of cult of personality in this sort of... I feel like you should just take the seat. I don't want to. I'm too nervous. Aww. Have you seen my face? Oh, it, It's not suitable. But it's great for radio. I want to go and get some water. Okay. You can take over whilst I get some water. Oh, no, but Fill people in the gaps. will see me. And I There's won't a be textbook to, here. I won't be able to moderate the chat. All right. The chat's going to... All hell's going to break, break loose in the chat for a moment. What if I just stay off camera, leave the empty seat and keep talking? <laughs> Put the Hitler textbook there. <laughs> I feel like that might be a bit too offensive. That will get the stream banned. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> right, I'm going to get some water. Yes, yes, you do. Because I need some. Cool. Well, I might. Look at how little water I have left in my glass. I have survived off one black coffee. It has coffee. <laughs> she is wrong. Coffee is the best drink. So, going back to with burning anxiety for a second there, um, one of the. As I mentioned before, it was written in German and not in the usual Catholic Latin. And this was because it was a definite direct attack on the Nazis and Hitler. Uh, I'm trying to think of something else to bring up here that's important. Unfortunately, my knowledge specifically of that is actually rather <laughs> rather poor. Um, so I will have to uh, what do you call it? transition to something else. I'm just going to sneakily... grab the textbook to see if there's anything particularly interesting. Um, I'm just going to also go through the chat as well whilst I find some good stuff uh, to go over to. So name one thing, actually, I'm going to face the microphone because now face me. There we go. So name one thing you think is most common to come up. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to ask Jasmine. <laughs> um, I think I think there is room for predictions. Um, so yes, I will definitely have to ask her when she comes back. And I hope you can now see my uh, confidence really irradiates through, doesn't it? <laughs> or lack thereof. Um, Byron, you go to university or have been? Uh, no, I am currently. Well, I've just wrapped up the final year of college. Uh, Jasmine also goes to college. I think someone else asked that earlier. Ooh, let's see if there's anything else here that is good or super good. Um, Yes, apologies. As you can tell, I have not planned for this uh, brief break in the <laughs> brief break in the whole stream of learning consciousness. Uh, a lot of people are saying that Hitler's rise to power um, could be a question that comes up. I mean, looking through this textbook, it, and um, from what I understand of years past, that would be something that could come up. Obviously, don't take my word as gospel. Like I, I, I don't know. Um, Okay, let's see. You sport football team? Yes, I do. 
Um, Music Echo. Oh, uh, Music Echo has a Kahoot. We're in luck. The stream is saved. Well, it'll be saved when Jasmine comes back, of course. Okay, so I am just going to open up the Kahoot. Hopefully it's good. I'm sure it will be. How do you right click on that? Oh, okay. Well, it's just opened it. <laughs> right, okay. So having a look through this, this is pretty good. Um, this is all the stuff. Oh, I see one. Oh, no, no. That is actually good. Okay, well, this actually covers, I think, literally everything that we've talked about um, in the last two hours or so. So um, I'm going to take Music Echoes um, uh, GCSE uh, thing, I think, first. I will open up uh, Cheap Card Transports as well. Um, so, yes, this is going to be a strong and stable Kahoot exit or Kexit. Um, oh, hi. I'm hi. back. I didn't. I, you, you didn't move to the I seat. Didn't. It's just been yeah. an empty chair for like the last yes. couple of minutes. That's right. Article forty-eight. I mean, fifty has been passed. We are going to move on with the okay, exit. Okay. Yep. Um, who's the is... president? Who's the chancellor? Oh, I, I don't know. You're probably president. Well, no. Who has more power? I have all the power. Yes. Yeah, so um, as your plumbing channel. It, in a way, the chancellor probably has more power. Yes. Kexit means Kexit. No, actually, you're the one more directly connected to the people, so That's maybe true. you're the chancellor. Yeah, I guess that would make more sense. That can be our next referendum. Who's yeah. the chancellor out of yeah. us and who's the president? <laughs> right, I'm going to load up a Kahoot. If anyone has any Weimar Nazi Germany questions. Yes, actually, that's the point. I probably should have said earlier, I completely forgot when I was uh, going through my little wrap up on um, with Bending Anxiety. Um, yes, questions. I will fire them at Jasmine and I'll try and answer some oh, of them. Yeah. I was going to say if you have any Cold War questions, but. Uh, the Cold War exams have now. already happened. <laughs> oh, and predictions. Predictions is the other big thing. Oh. I... D I, I... Yeah, we, we... I still said earlier, but I'm not really sure how we can... If we can predict. Uh, a lot of people are saying... Um, what should we call it? Uh, yeah, a lot of people are saying that Hitler's rise to power is something, I think, coming up. We don't know. Um, so, I was going to say there is something else that I was going to mention. I'm yep. sort of, you can tell when I'm, uh, what do you call it, dawdling or uh, trying to find words to say, terrified of dead air. Mm. Um, trying to think, what was I going to say? I need to. This is a sort of a name chat that everyone is signing up for. Oh, the Reich Church, of course. I'd completely forgotten about the Reich Church. That is extremely relevant. Talk about that I whilst about. I thought I set up Kahoot. Oh, of course. Everyone's just going to have this image of me looking yeah. at my computer, just like, yeah. hmm. This is annoying. Um, earlier on, we tried to we, set yeah, it up. We tried to so sort it out so we me. could yeah, swap over to a camera with Byron. But... I do like this prediction I've just seen. Hitler might come up. Oh, I think they might be right. In fairness, actually, last year, Hitler uh, and the Nazis only got mentioned in one question. The rest of it was all Weimar. So actually, oh, I should have cruel. started backwards and gone the other way because I feel yeah. like Hitler's, Hitler's going to probably up, yeah. come up a lot more in this exam, prediction-wise. Uh, right, so there's another page I want to go over, sort of societal stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm creating an a long, long time ago Kahoot account. Cool. Uh, I want to use Kahoot as a teacher, as a student, <laughs> socially, or at work. Oh, yes. I'm going to be a teacher. <laughs> well, that's your life goal, isn't it? <laughs> oh, where is this? My, my knowledge of the Reich Church, I probably could sort of explain it in a couple of um, things. So obviously Germany is like most of Europe at this point, fairly religious. Um, I think obviously you had churches and that sort of thing. Obviously the order of the church comes in direct contact or conflict with um, with an authoritarian regime that sort of wants to purge non-Hitler influence from society. I think the Reich Church was an attempt, uh, similarly I believe the Russians did it as well in, in the 20s, to create essentially a church will basically spew their propaganda and act in the way they want. Um, I wish I could be more help. <laughs> uh, my notes for that bit are non-existent. Is there anything else you did other than the right church and then going back? Only because I had a revision question today that said give free examples. So I forget I'm actually uh, not. Um, I am audible. I apologies yes. for the whatever that was. Everything you say can be heard. Yes. In fact, the microphone's actually pointing at you right now. It is. Yeah, I pointed it towards me and forgot. Oh, turn it back. <laughs> I want to hear me. 
Oh, why did they want to do that? Well, chat? in fairness, it was just like halfway between us. Um, to answer Jacob's question, neither. Um, okay, so um, let's have a look and try and find something again. Okay, right, that's just spam. Right. I am um, still here, mind you. Okay, so I've got an account set up. Um, to find a Kahoot to play. Cool, Search right, uh, Music Gecko has answered uh, basically what my little, what do you call it, thing. The Pastors Emergency League. That was it. That was the term that I was looking for in the book. So, um, yes. Okay. Uh, thing and stuff. So, yes. Apologies for the dead air, everyone. I will try and find what I wanted to see. Oh, yes, the Reich Church. Uh, sorry, there was some other stuff. So, essentially, uh, the Nazis combined a load of Protestant churches together to make the Reich Church. Um, quoting directly from the book, because I had forgotten this, uh, Protestant pastors were allow allowed the Nazi swastika to be displayed in their churches. Um, of course, the usual anti-Semitism that you would expect from the Nazis. They even banned the Old Testament, which, for those who aren't really familiar with Judaism, the Jewish Bible is most of the Old Testament with some you know, changes here and there and obviously translated differently. Um, not all Protestants were too pleased about this. Um, you know, I don't think everyone really wanted it, but it was sort of thrust upon them, of course. And yes, another thing that I'd forgotten, thank you, Gecko, that uh, priests were harassed despite the Concordat and they had to swear allegiance to Hitler because, as I mentioned before, one of the problems that Hitler would have had with the religious authority of the uh, Catholic Church is that, that uh, the priest's sort of loyalty supersedes the government and goes back directly to the Vatican or the newly created state of the Vatican thanks to Mussolini. Um, the, this was a commonality throughout Hitler's reign actually. Um, the day Hindenburg died, I believe, or you know, after Hindenburg died, when Hitler made everyone in the armed forces um, sign, redo the Pledge of Allegiance, it wasn't to the state of Germany, but to Hitler himself. It, it, this was a constant part of his sort of authority, I think. Yes. Yes. Words. Correct. All, 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 it's all good? It's all good. I think I think I have a plan, right? I found a, a Weimar yeah. Nazi Germany GCSE Kahoot. Marvellous. So what I am going to do is, I think I'm just going to do my whole window. Cool. That's okay. Um, when the Kahoot pin is um, there, uh, can people see the Kahoot? Uh, not currently. I haven't cool. got it up. Uh, oh, and we completely forgot one of the other important things about Germany. Um, their infrastructure during the Nazi period. So, of course, the world-famous autobahns were... They weren't started under the Nazis. They were proposed, I believe, in Is the there 20s. a way I can get this up without showing my bookmarks bar? Because I don't really want to remove... Because I'm on my oh, mum's laptop. Oh, incognito. Incognito. I've got a feeling incognito shows up. That, no, it still shows up the oh, bookmarks. Right. Um, I think if you right-click and then click show bookmarks bar, it should be able to hide, hide it. Um, right-click. <laughs> So yes, um, oh yeah, Music Gecko also points out that Hitler reduced unemployment from 6 million to 300,000. The thing is, is when people say that he reduced unemployment, he sort of, he doctored the figures, essentially. So certain people that were considered unemployed in Weimar Germany, for example, Jews, um, women, for example, they were no longer considered employable or part of the labour force. So... When people say he reduced the unemployment rate, he did, but not to that kind of way. I guess if you change the meaning of unemployment, as you know, many people do in politics, change the meaning of words, um, that is true. Um, yes, invisible unemployment is the term that I was looking for there. You can tell because of the yep. stalling. Just to make everyone aware, I'm about to create a new Kahoot scene. So Marvelous. the screen's about to suddenly go black, but you should still be able to hear us whilst I set it up. Cool. Um, yeah. So, if I do... yeah. Oh, uh, just to it. clarify, for Mushtilade Berry, yes, yes he did um, reduce unemployment, but not to the extreme levels shown there. Um, 
Oh, and of course we've completely glossed over probably the biggest elephant in the room when talking about Adolf Hitler. Uh, the concentration camps, which started pretty much as soon as he took office. Um, a lot of people... It's probably best to delineate here. He hadn't started the death camps that um, opened up in Poland at this point, but the concentration camps had very much started by the... when he took office. So, yes. Uh, have we got... I'm just... just uh... There we go, video capture device. Cool. Oh, um, we've sort of also... Oh, yes, and I should probably also mention the Hoover concentration camps were aimed at. Um, pretty much all of the undesirable groups in the Nazi society. So, gays, uh, gypsies, Jews. And I think also the disabled as well. But I don't know if they were... I think they might have been euthanised instead. Um, this is all getting rather bleak, obviously. <laughs> Pretty nasty. Pretty nasty stuff. Um, yes, um, the sort of uh, undesirable people, and yes, the I believe people. Uh, to mention is the correct German term, I believe. Uh, things we've glossed over so far. Um, you sort of mentioned the use of the media and sort of Hitler's ability to travel. Um, this also comes up again. Goebbels is propaganda guy. You talked about this at length, didn't you? Uh, I didn't talk about it at length. Good, because I... You can talk about it at length now if you wish to. Well, at length, about I two think sentences. think Kahoot just about set up. I need oh, to get my own phone on Kahoot. Cool. Um, so yes, um, the Nazis were really big on this new thing called radio. Uh, you might have heard of radio. Is this, What's radio, this I wonder? This thing we used to use before TV came about and the internet. Um, so, yes... When, of course, the Nazis took office, any private radio, I don't think private radio was that big, but all the radios in the country were, or radio stations, rather, were put directly under Nazi control. So Goebbels would be able to do what he wanted with them. And they were distributed quite rapidly across the country. And like any, uh, like any um, authoritarian regime, they used the media in a way to essentially control public discussion and thought. So not unlike Pravda in the Soviet Union um, or television during the Soviet era as well. Um, another thing I've just noticed, uh, yes, the manufactured radios in the Nazi regime couldn't tune in to foreign channels, particularly the BBC services. This played a more important part in World War Two, where signal jamming became fairly common um, on both sides. And this is one of the reasons signal jamming would happen. Sorry. Have you covered everything you think uh, yes. needs covering? Yes. Are we ready to kahoot? We are ready. Everyone get your phones ready. Yes, what is the pin? Right, the pin is not not there yet, but if I... Are you using the same one I sent you? Oh, did know? you send me one? I don't know. How many questions has it got? How did you send, how did you send me that one? That is the right one. Okay. Alright, let's press play. Um, which key figures were killed in the Night of the Long Knives? Um, I think that's the three. I don't think von Papen was killed. I think he ran away because I'm sure he was tried at Nuremberg. Uh, so many questions. Yes, yes. Franz von Papen was tried at Nuremberg. I was right. All oh, right. So um, yeah, he was not killed. I think uh, I don't think von Schleicher was either. I'm sure he said. Oh no, no, no. Von Schleicher, von Schlicker. He died. <laughs> right, we have a game pin. Have we got a game pin? Right. Yes. So what is 15716. 157. One, no, 15716. Yeah. Nickname. What should I call myself? Lord Byron. Gee, I wonder who's here already. <laughs> Rosa Luxemburg's just joined. Oh no! Oh my god, I haven't even joined yet. You, someone's stolen Rosa from you. Oh. Very much the, um, what did I say earlier about Rosa Luxemburg? You said it when the mic muted. Oh no. So no one heard. We had a no, conversation about Rosa Luxemburg. Luxemburg earlier, yeah. Um, what did I say? I've forgotten. I don't have enough characters to put a long, long time ago, so I guess I'll just be Jasmine, yeah. so everyone knows who I am. I can have a smiley face because yeah. um, I saw a smiley face just there. Cool. Um, 
Music Echo has just asked if we're going to cover the book again. Um, possibly. I mean, there's only, what, three... There's only... Oh, there's two chapters left. There are so many people joined. There's, like... This is the biggest queue I've ever joined. How many people are there? We're up to 40 players. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's marvellous. This is going to be good. I'm going right. to come last. Uh, shall I give it a moment to... Just so that everyone who wants to join can join? Yes, if we start in... A minute. Yeah. Um, Give people a bit of time. This is um, going to be the most amazing Kahoot ever. Able to. Oh, um, if you're not able to join Kahoot, which um, some people probably aren't. Yeah. Uh, leave it in the chat, and um, yes, I'll try and tally up. But I'm, yeah. Now, if you I'm don't know how to join Kahoot, basically, go to get Kahoot. it up on your phone. Go, go to, to Kahoot.it. Yes, Kahoot.it. I've just left and a. Then you enter the game pin. Which is one five seven one six. As you can see on the oh, we're up to fifty players now. Fifty players, and Jesus. you can yeah, type in type in a name, and come and join. What sort of names have we got? Um, um, are there names that we may have to uh, politely I eat? Think we're actually pretty all right. Oh, marvelous. Um, got Stresman. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's just called communism. Yes, I'm a mistake. <laughs> Great, grade eight incoming. No, grade nine incoming. <laughs> what have they Cornish next to <laughs> uh, Can I read these out? Like the whole list? Uh, yeah, I could do. This is because I feel like this would be a good way of recognizing the people who are with us tonight. Oh. So this means that's right. I'm gonna have to come on stream and have a look. Yeah. So, yeet the seat. Yeet the seat. All right. Okay. Right. Can I stay in the background so everyone can just, just continue? Well, I guess you can. Or shall I go and watch the chat? Yes. So we have Alice, Exam, Turbo Cheesecake, Sophia, Hindenburger, Simp V1. Hindenburger. Um, Lol Nazi. I don't know if we can have that one. Can we have that one? Is that, I'm not sure. Is that a stepping a line? We've got I 60 more players. I don't quite know. I saw that. I was like, hmm. hmm. Referendum time. Referendum time. Um, lol or to not lol? Uh, Kate, James, Aif's channel, Aif Chanel. I'm going to go with Aif Chanel because that's more interesting. Hiya, <laughs> Ananu, Mussolini 2.0. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Smiley Face, Stan Luna, Kim Jong Uno, <laughs> Konjiji, John, uh, Bonhofer, 1453. Never forget. I don't know if that's an in joke or something. Victoria, Mooncake. Yeet. Just yeet. yeet. Uh, De Fura. Uh, just to check, am I looking directly into the camera? The green light. Don't the green worry light. about looking directly I, into I, the camera. I do. I don't I want to look like an idiot. I have been looking directly into the camera for like the whole time because I've been reading notes and cool. looking at things. Okay. Um, uh, yes, uh, you got a dead joke. Pro-life. General Kenobi. Daisy Renton. Communism. Andrew. Spelt wrong. Char. Loading. Yes. Sandy. I'm a mistake. Lenny face? Grey date incoming. Sarah K. Jachor. Golden. Hind. Rx Der. Cornish Pasty. Hi. Ivy. Eva. The real Ivon Pappen. Rosa Luxemburg. Dixie Normus. <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> I just, music gecko in the sh chat had put that. <laughs> Dixie, Dixie Normus. Normus. <laughs> and only when you read it out did I realise. Al Lloyd. <laughs> And Lord Byron. And there's some new ones. Vanessa, Bupus Represent, Mihir, Hadakan, Yeet de Fuhrer, <laughs> Nawaz Sharif, uh, Elongated Musk, Ian and Jill, History, Himmler, Alice, Exam, Smud, Turbo Cheesecake. I think we've read him twice. Right. So I think we're if ready. We, I think we're... I, you're going to have to go back left, here because... Yeah. Um... Cool. And Yakov. Oh, this is Let's gonna be go. the biggest Kahoot ever. This is going to be the best Kahoot ever got his kahoot open on on that screen right let's go for it three two one do it begin 35 questions are you ready so i'm just seeing god you're meant to be a history channel you don't know what 1453 never forgets my dude oh of course it's yeah. some oh what's the question peace talks at the end of the world war when did the peace talk where did the peace talks at the end of world war one take place oh, i see okay uh for the for the Rome. Oh, right. 
I don't know, if you want to slide slightly this way yes. so you can see uh, it. That might be a good idea. Um, it's my I'm I'm in eighth place. See, yeah. I'm not God. Oh, Wait, relaxing, I, I failed the first question. <laughs> <laughs> I was too busy doing thinking about other things and just tapped one. Well, that's my problem. Um, where's the monarchy? Wait, what? Um, I guess it's that one. Hmm. I presume. I've only got 600 points. I basically might as well give up now. <laughs> We're going to see how in. much more epic... Like, I got a grade 9, so you can see how good some of these people are going to be. Okay. Like, they're going to be like grade 11 people. Yes, this is intense. Um, I'm in second place now, though. But, oh, but, I'm in 11th. <laughs> well, 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 well. <laughs> Rosa Luxemburg is... That's quite a lead yeah. for Rosa. Yeah, good job, Rosa. Uh, our lady. Yes. Rosa L. <laughs> Mussolini 2.0 is doing a good job. It's turbo cheesecake and uh. I I must say, um, for people who have just joined, this is a kahoot. Uh, that was a noise. I think that's correct. That's, oh, that's I when, think I just tapped the wrong one. Yeah, I, I did. I believe that is what... Oh, no, I've clicked the wrong one. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, oh no, my knees. This is the is problem dead. you instinctively just like quick see what and they're like, yeah. Yeah, I of tapped course, the wrong one. Of course, I I'm still in second place. I'm so. 240 points behind communism. <laughs> I'm 16 <laughs> 1600 behind Rosa Luxemburg. Oh. With Rosa Luxemburg's maps. like she's lit. Yeah. Back from the dead just to answer. Rosa Luxemburg's <laughs> going to get like a grade 35. A grade 1919. Right, there we go. Right. This is a this is the kind of question I like. Yeah. Gets it wrong. <laughs> well, obviously it was who's Philip Sheetman? Shademan. Shademan. He was a leading member of the SDP. Oh, well. He, he ran wasn't. to a window. That's basically his great part in the creation and announced a new republic. I see. Yeah, I'm still Oh, I'm nine points behind Hind. Oh, uh, you can't see dates on the far side. Can't see dates. Yeah. Um, oh, the face cam is in. Ah, oh, that might be an issue. Ah, I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's still blocking a question. Just put it in the blank space. Where's a blank space? That Basically, I can where those graphs are. Like there where? we go. Perfect. Right. Is that good? <laughs> Tell me if I do it wrong again. That'll be why everyone was struggling. Yeah. See, Rosa Luxemburg can see through time Rosa and space a genius. and is able to work out things even with half the question answers <laughs> removed. Right, let's try again. Oh my god. What's that on turbo cheesecake? Please kill me now. <laughs> That's not the right outlook on life. This is like communism versus fascism, right? Like Rosa <laughs> yeah. Luxemburg at number one. Oh. Which... Did I get that? I think on the technicality I think that might be right. Because these translations are interesting. Hmm. So I'm assuming oh, I see where my that new, one is. Where my thingy now is actually it should go here. Yes, put it over that, that kahoot. Oh, but now I'm blocking that. Oh well, no one can see that. They get to see me instead. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lag because it's live stream. Yes. Um. Right, Rosa Luxemburg. I mean, I mean it's pretty clear now that Rosa Luxemburg's won the whole thing. I'm in sixth place. Oh, I can get onto the leaderboard next time. Communism has hit an answer streak. <laughs> Mussolini. What was that? Communism has hit the live streak. <laughs> live streak? Str oh, I don't know. Pure genius or guesswork, it asks me. <laughs> Did you vote? Pure genius. Can you not vote? Mm? I, oh, no, you're not playing, are you? I am playing. I forget how Kahoot works. I'm, I'm, it's just this little thing on my screen just here. I see. I thought you were playing on there. I read it. Was. Yeah. There we go. That's more like it. That's. I like it when the overwhelming oh. majority of people get it right. I'm in third place. 760 points behind Lord Byron. Oh, no. <laughs> this is exciting. And 3,000 behind Rosa Luxemburg. Oh, that, with my thing in the new place, you now... Actually, you can pretty much see the leaderboard. 
Okay, people just... are still saying they can't see the question, so it's probably still in the way. Just make yourself smaller. Just, yeah, just shrink myself. Where should I? Any preferences on where I go? I'll just put myself in like a tiny little. Yeah, there we right, go. Right, there we go. That was good. Um, all right, next question. Hopefully, you should be able to see now. Oh, we talked about this article a lot earlier. Let's see if I tapped the right one. <laughs> I made a joke about it like 10 minutes ago. <laughs> the excitement. It's palpable. Oh, a lot of answers. 39 answers. Oh, 53 answers. Oh, yeah. 745 points, points behind you now. I'm catching up. I'm impressed with my comeback. Hmm. Rosa Luxemburg's just miles ahead. Yeah. It's all the same people here. Paul Mussolini's gone now. <laughs> that sounds like a really... I want that to be... More Mussolini 2.0, yeah. just to clarify. Not actual yes. Mussolini. Just to clarify, Jasmine does not condone or endorse Mussolini. Or any kind of fascism. No. It would, it would be a bit of a whiplash. Turbo cheesecake. Please kill me now. 16, 16 players just hit an answer streak for. Ooh. Oh, good. A. Eh? Oh, this is a nice, vague question. Hell yeah. Right. I think I've got it right, but. um. I hope I've got it right. Yeah. Uh, cheap car transport in the chat is Rosa Luxemburg. You are doing well. This is. Wait, who. In the chat. Yeah. Cheap car transport. Yeah. All right. Is Good Rosa job. Luxemburg. Yeah. Oh my god, 10,000 points. 10,000. Um, at the very least, I am. Um, I've just got the same people. Yeah. Here now. It is. And. Um, Shots. Please Kill Me Now is Jake O'Reilly as well. Um, you did say this. I did. So I just didn't pay attention to what the question actually was as it came up. Mate, I can't even see the question. <laughs> <laughs> you can just about. Just about. I have to squint. Are you still beating me? Yes. Well, it's because I had, a, I had the advantage of getting a few right at the beginning. Mm. No, I'm, I'm losing ground to you. Slowly. But you're oh, if you been... get this one right, and you won't take me. Please kill me now has been replaced with uh. <laughs> I'm sure that's how it's meant to be pronounced. Oh, of course, of course. Oh. I think my dramatic... this this had a video on it earlier. Good to know that no one did the, the putch of the black right with. <laughs> People are pretty consistently correct here, actually. Is the black right for one um, cap? Uh, no, I don't think so. They put like fry corps. I'm pretty certain it's just a. I don't know. I don't be. think it's mentioned in the textbook at all under oh, that see. name or anything. So yeah. Jacob Riley says Jasmine and Byron have an advantage. Yes. We do. But Rosa Luxemburg doesn't. Nope. And Rosa Luxemburg's winning. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's not much we can do about that advantage. No. Other than you can take the moral high ground. Yes. Uh, okay. Well, then... Anyone think the Fry Corps were communist? <laughs> yeah. Fry communism. <laughs> <laughs> no, freedom doesn't really scream to mind when I hear the name, so you know. Her name is a little bit disingenuous anyway. No. People are people are doing people are doing pretty well on these questions. Yeah, me, Not um, gonna lie. looking at the chat with some of the people that mm. haven't on, yeah. on the uh, what you call it, Music Echo has pretty much got every question right so far. Ah, cool. So, Everyone's been one. revising well. Yes, this is going this is uh what you call it, um voting Turbo well Cheesecake's been kicked off the leaderboard now. Who 
was not involved in the cat putsch. Oh, good. A load of names I've forgotten. I've got this. You've won. Well, my lead is gone. Because I, I, I know who one of them is. Well, I know, I know who two of them is, but I know who one of them is who definitely wouldn't have been involved. Right. This I, is where I get it wrong, but... Yeah. I well obviously Cap was not present at the hell yes yeah so Carl Liebknecht was like with uh, Rosa Luxemburg in running the oh, I see the um, German Communist Party I see I I chose Hermann Erhard because of you know I don't know oh this one was a <laughs> juicy <laughs> question we got a a face I don't really there's no way to pronounce that no it's I, an impressive face mm, so eyes bulging open. Wide eyed. That's Wide-eyed. the excitement at seeing the history GCSE tomorrow. Can I just point out Mao Zedong is the highest climber? <laughs> I've spotted that. <laughs> I love. Also, I'm in second place now. Yeah, I know. I love all these names. People need to put more names of historical figures. If only people could see your face, like trying to. I can't see even what the read them. <laughs> I think that's correct. I don't. I. I. I'm, I'm okay at this point with. My advantage is paying off. Oh, people did really well on that question. That's that is good. Lucky, yeah. Um, I just want to say, Adrian says, or yep. Adrian, I think he's got two A's. You guys have a reason I might pass history. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. There's a Please do pass it. Normal thumbs up from it. Did you just fist bump me? I don't know. I don't know. It was just weird seeing your the hand in that space. So I was like, I've been. I I'm now cool. That's a thing I do with some people. So it's like, so there's a person who every time I go past him, we we do that. I see. I see. Fun fact. Fun fact. And that person is not me. No, it's not you. Um. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is Ian who I think he is? Yeah. In the chat. Okay, cool. Probably. Cool. I don't know. Wait. Thanks to my wife. Uh, I forget you can't see this, so you know. Yeah. Um. Right. Yeah. So. When was the hyperinflation crisis? Um. One of those years, I think. Yeah, I think it was one of those years. <laughs> I feel like if you look at all the different years that are on offer there, you can work it out. Yeah, they haven't even got any good trick years there. Yeah. Only got 4,000 points to gain on Rosa Luxemburg. Well, I've got 2,000 points to gain on you. Oh, hell yes. This is getting good. Um, I was going to say, for the benefit of everyone whilst we're do- if it's not doing the Kahoot, because there's probably going to be a mm. couple of people who aren't, um, if there's any random... German history text questions, yeah. questions uh, interwar Germany questions, I will try and answer them. At the same time as At the same time, yeah. Nailing the Kahoot. Yes. Good luck. And thus far I've proved I can sort of do that. <laughs> Passive aggression. <laughs> Passive aggression. Right, that is getting yeeted. Oh. Mods are not asleep. <laughs> Two jobs at the same time. Um, some people are mentioning that there's a little bit of a uh, what you call it delay in when things are coming through. So yeah. we're going not necessarily too fast, but they people are not having enough time to answer. I don't think there's anything we can really I'm do not about yet, that because there's a certain amount of time. What I'll do is I'll that read out the questions. Explains why there's a sudden yeah thing. So I'll try reading out the questions. Mm. Yeah. If we read out the questions, I'm, that might help, but it might not because there's still going to be the delay. We can try. Yeah, so we've, we're at a bit, bit of an advantage here. Yes. But, uh, you've seen how you, what use I've made yep. of that. Okay, right, next question. What nickname did the Nazis give to the politicians who signed the Treaty of Versailles? Options, October criminals is the triangle... Diamond is July criminals, circle is November criminals, and square is September criminals. Okay, uh, people are saying that reading out the question makes literally no difference. Okay. I wasn't sure if there was a delay between the sound and the video or whatever. 
There's not really much we can do about that then. No, because nothing. Can do I can't that. just magically make the internet faster. No. So. You can try. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> yep. Oh. Um, yes, so as I said before, um, oh, actually that was a good idea, writing the question in the chat. Oh, I that might try, be an idea. I try, but it's going to be rather slow. Um, right, let's try that though. Right, okay. When was the Doors plan signed? When was the Doors plan signed? Um, I realise I'm not going to be able to write it quick enough. You know, you're I? not going to be able to, are you? I... I... I, I, I'm really good at this. That's what I tell myself. Oh. <laughs> so let's find out if that one made a difference. Did that make a difference? Uh, more answers, yeah. Okay. Let me see a few more answers. Um, we need the... Oh, you need the colours of the answers. Right. I wonder... Hmm. Because the real answer, I guess, would be to give people the actual Kahoot link. That would be a bit of a step too far. Um, oh. I'm not sure how that if it you can physically do that with. No, I don't one. think you can. Um, I think you can only have one screen with the actual Kahoot game up. Yeah, yeah, I think you can. Um, yeah, I just need to quickly check something. I mean, people are doing pretty well in spite yeah, of the lag. I think so. Unfortunately, I think people may just have to write it out if there's going to yes. be. I mean, it's more of an yeah. excuse to yourself if you got it wrong. Yes, yes. Uh, people are, or one person I think is asking for us to get a Discord server. Oh. It's something we've thrown about, but I don't think we've really. I don't know. It needs more discussion yeah, we to work to out whether or not that's a a viable a viable option. Because I'm having a great. Well, it's been fun moderating the live chat here. Mm. The Discord. Because it would be cool to beast. create a kind of Discordy community. Yeah, because then thought... there are certain things with having a Discord server. Mm. And uh, yeah, we'd have to think about it off air. I yeah, think. it's it's something that's been thought about. Yes, you'll be pleased to know. Yeah. Okay, so uh, also someone's asked me to go through the Kellogg Briand Pact. Or... Um, yeah, should we do... Oh yeah, do the next question. Yeah, next question. Yes. Do two at once. Which of these did not help German economic recovery? So someone asked me to cover the Kellogg Briand Pact, Pact even. So, in August 1928, Germany and 61 other countries signed the Kellogg Briand Pact. Uh, this promised that they would not. These countries promised that the they would not use uh, war as a sort of means to achieve foreign policy aims. Uh, as you can probably tell from the name, uh, Kellogg is an American diplomat, and Briand is a French foreign diplomat, a minister or something. So yes, um, it's just just here it says three in a row. Mao Zedong is back in the game. <laughs> Can you take a screenshot of that and send it to me? <laughs> well, you can go back in through the live stream and find it. Yes, we will. That's great. Continue. Oh yeah, and uh, the Kellogg Briand Pact was seen as a sign that Weimar was a respected and stable country now, and of course this was like what 1928, so things were going well for Weimar Germany. So this was seen as you know a big step forward, and you know a good time had by all. Yeah, unless you're Hitler. Um, oh, time up. All oh, right. Yes. A source I found in the book, which I'm going to read verbatim, uh, is from a German journalist writing in 1929. Mm. In comparison with what we expected after Versailles, Germany has raised herself up. It now shoulders the terrific burden of a peace in a way we should never have thought possible. The bad feeling of Versailles has been conquered. This being in direct relation to Kellogg Briand. We've had a bit of a change in the leaderboard since the last question. Oh, blog. Trying to remember who it was, but a, a new person popped up on the leaderboard. Oh, good. I'm now in 13th place because I've. Not answered a couple of questions. Yeah, but yes. I don't mind. M Mustelli de Berry? Yes, he's been in the chat for a little while. Ah, oh, cool. So Rosa Luxemburg's literally on fire. <laughs> God, it's a bit insensitive. <laughs> <laughs> 27,000 points. Nearly 28,000. When was the Munich Putsch? I'm going to go with 1939. 
We covered that. 1939, unfortunately, is not an option. <laughs> well, it, might it should be. But it didn't happen then. Maybe. That's what you think. <laughs> Don't write that the Munich Putsch happened in 1939 in your exam if it comes up. <laughs> no. People are doing really well. I am impressed. I mean, not. Yeah, because some so... of these questions are oddly specific, etc. Yeah, um, they have been some interestingly worded. Ellie is the highest climber. That's not quite as good as Mao Zedong. No. I miss I miss Mao Zedong being on our leaderboard. <laughs> <laughs> he never was on the leaderboard, just in the bite of the bottom. Was he? Oh. Yep. I know. Cool. Right. Social Democratic Party, obviously. If I this mean, doesn't get a hundred, oh no! Hang on. This this question isn't entirely. No, that's really. It's unfair. an abbreviated version of the abbreviation. Yeah. So what would that be? DAP. So Deutsche Party. Because it's the thingy yeah. German Workers Party. Not wow. going to say the early bit. But that is. That is mean. The question's not good enough. No, this is not a quiz done by us. Oh yeah, because eight people have said the German Workers' Party, and it was the National Socialist German, German Workers' Party. Party yeah, so so. They, oh. they deserve points too. Whoever wrote this is wrong. God, you can mm. hear my voice sort of going, can't you? Hindenburger is making a comeback <laughs> with three in a row. Hindenburger. <laughs> such, a good, <laughs> such a good name. I need to come up with a good name next time. You do. You do. Jasmine is a bit old hat. Even Lord Byron is a step up from I was, that. I was under pressure. Ah, oh, I've picked the wrong one. <laughs> oh. He, I don't even know. <laughs> you don't know which one I pointed at, chat. Yes. But, yeah, that, that one was... Like the worst one of all of the ones you could have picked. I thought I was clicking on go balls. I am I am a very stupid, stupid man. I mean people did good a good job on that one as well. Oh smiley face is coming. And Ivy is making a comeback with three in a row. When was the Reichstag fire? Please say I got this correct. I believe it was 1339. Yes, 1339. That was actually in 1066. It was the same year as the um, Norman Conquest. I'll Did Harold Godwinson do it? I've heard rumours. He poured yes, a bucket of water Harold on Godwinson. his kids and poured a bottle of gasoline on the Reichstag. <laughs> we have the best sense of humour. Oh, Ellie's back as the highest climber again. Ellie's doing a good job. The German Labour Front. Yes. I presume that's right. I don't know. You know I've got 18,000 points and I'm not that good. Yeah, but you also have the massive time advantage. Do I? Well, I don't know how massive the time advantage I is. I think it's really just a second or so. That's good enough. I think... Oh, I've dropped down a place because of my slowness trying to decide that question. Well, I'm in tenth place. Get on my level. <laughs> yeah. M must must delete him. Very has overtaken me. Oh, smiley face is in fifth now. Oh, that's us. That's turning into sad face. Ooh, spicy question. Which group was purged during the Night of the Long Knives? Oh. Is that accurate? It's interesting. You see, like, in terms of the answers coming in, there's like a couple, and then it would just have a big surge, and then yeah. it would slow down again. Hmm. Oh, no. Must the leader Berry is making a lead over me. And Smiley Face is gone and replaced by a different face. <laughs> there's also Smiling. Um, and Angan Robinson says that we are ahead by 10 seconds. 10 seconds? I don't know if it's quite that broad, but we'll, uh, we'll find I'm out. Not, do we even have that much time? Right. I've got a bit of an experiment that might not oh. work. I've just thought of it, so it might be rubbish. Okay. So if we start... By the way, Lord Byron is back with an answer streak of three. 
If we stop. Yep. Um, so my thinking is if we have it, so the second that we start doing a thing, if I write, oh, hang on, people are saying it's about 15 seconds, actually. Oh. So if we watch the timer for when people start to call in yeah. answers. Okay, that's my idea. Right. So when the sudden rush of... Yeah. Okay. So that must be it. But people must be getting the, whatchamacallit, the options to choose things before that. Yeah. Hmm. So our six answers currently. Okay. And then we've got ten seconds to go. Suddenly, yeah, nine. Nine, okay, And then everyone right. rushes in. In fairness, this is an impossibly difficult question. How many questions did we have total? Uh, I think it's 35, so we've got seven left. No, not 35, I mean uh, seconds. Oh, I think it was 25 seconds. Could be wrong. Could be 30. Um, yeah, so it probably is about 15 seconds. Today. Yeah. Um, that is quite significant. That is quite significant. So, sorry, dudes. Yeah, sorry, everyone. Um, I don't have a solution. No. This is the problem with Kahoot. Basically, I'm cheating and still in third. I'm cheating and I'm still in 11. <laughs> oh, the real Von Pappen is making a comeback with three in a row. <laughs> I love people's names. Oh. People's car. Is that correct? No, that's People's Volkswagen. Pers People person. Yeah. People power. Well, People's I'll, community. Well, I'll tell you when I get the answer right because I actually do know this. Oh. And the music gecko has just confirmed. Yes. Oh. Oh, People's I didn't community. get it right. Volksgemeinschaft. I'm like got 2,000 points behind Mr. Leader Berry now, despite my cheating. <laughs> Ellie's climbing again, oh. up seven places. And the smiley face, the, the other face has been replaced by the smiley face again. She hasn't got anything on my boy, Mao Zedong. <laughs> <laughs> law for the encouragement of marriage. I wonder what that law did. Said marriage. It's good. He encouraged it. Marriage. That was a bit a bit hard. I'm literally dying. Ouch. <laughs> oh, I got this one wrong. Yeah. I'm probably gonna drop down to fourth soon. I've, I've dropped down to eleven. I'm Stop behind... complaining about your eleven. Look, I'm Ugh. behind Dixie Normus. <laughs> oh no. How do you think I feel? When did membership of the Hitler Youth become compulsory? Oh, we didn't talk about the Idlewise Pirates. No. Should I mention who the Idlewise Pirates are? You could do. So they were a youth group that didn't like the Nazis. And the, the swing youth and, and the, the jazz youth. And the jazz youth, well, of course. Uh, oh. Oh, I said... Oh, okay, good. Eva's come into the the running now with a smiley face. Oh, nice. Copying my style, though I think she probably put her name in first. Rosa Luxemburg's just just dominating it now. I said evil vice incorrectly. Oh, this is the problem with having people who know what they're doing vice. in the chat. This is no, this is good though, because I I can never embarrass myself in a video like this. I can't see, it's always like, can I shot them? Oh, piss. I mean, oh, 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 oh. Nothing was said. Nothing heard. was said. That was, I feel like drawing attention to it is the... <laughs> the worst thing. Worst thing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like this comment, literally going to fail history now, wow. <laughs> This is a clean chat where we only use nice words. This is a G this is a is this a Christian stream. <laughs> this is not a Christian stream. This is stream. not a Christian stream, sorry. I was a poorly executed meme. Uh Sarah. Sarah Banks is the highest climber. Doesn't have any capitals in her name apparently. <laughs> um We're oh. right down to the last few questions. What's that? Oh, Oh no, um, Gly Shelton. Gly Shelton. Okay, I don't yeah. know. We need some German lessons from Music Gecko, basically. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, we do. Right. 
skal være. Oh. Wait for that, and Berg's nearly at 50,000 points. Can she do it? <laughs> Dixie Normus has got onto the leaderboard in fifth. All hail Dixie Normus. Just something to think about. Yes. Oh no, you distracted me. I've lost my lead now. I say lead, time lead. That's what happened. Big up Dixie Normus. <laughs> it's Dixie Normus. That's what I said, Dixie Normus. There we go. But yeah, big up Dixie Normus. <laughs> gotta, gotta have a space between the two words, or... Oh, I, I just skipped. I didn't read what was at the bottom. I'm sorry if it was someone new. Um, healthy young people. Healthy young people. I think you'll find their biggest target, obviously. <laughs> healthy young Germans. Yes. <laughs> Such a difficult question. If anyone gets this wrong, <laughs> they're probably just misclicked. I think... Four of your people have a <laughs> have issues. Uh, Holtler is is the highest climber. Dixie Normus is still in fifth place. <laughs> Oh, it says golden golden years. So wrapping up this Kahoot, what golden did people think? <laughs> what did people think? Uh let's see. I forget people on the fifteen second delay. Yeah. So Is that the last one? Yeah, I think it's that the is. Rosa Luxembourg one. I got third place. Hell yeah. Well, it is your quiz. It is my quiz. And your my, I didn't make it. No. I got 11th, and on my screen it just says well played. Oh. It doesn't even bother showing the... Mine says classy, with an exclamation mark. Okay, people liked the Kahoot, which is That's good. That's good. So, I am glad. Do you get the big leaderboard? Ah, oh, yes. Wait, uh, uh, is there a full leaderboard that we can get up? I think so. Where do, how do I do this? Oh, I don't know. Oh, you can save results. Save results? So I came 10th place overall. Not bad. Right, let me just, in case something comes up weird when I press save results. <laughs> R.I.P. Dixie Normus. Direct download. We can download the results. Yep. Apparently you oh, can. Oh, you, you get a spreadsheet. Oh. 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 That is intricate. That is scarily intricate. I would just screen it in case it has any private information. Yep, I've currently got the webcam open. Did you? How do you rate this Kahoot? That was pretty good. Pretty lit. I did just give it one star. Oh. Now, I thought it was alright. The person who wrote it, if they ever see this, which they might, you know, um, I would suggest being a bit less specific like, mm. and using terms that trip people up. That's yep. some real broad advice. So, what do we do? Oh. Wow, we've got some really interesting uh, analytics here. We've got... Um, oh, averages, how many people got what question? Wait, should we get this up on a, a separate screen? Yeah, um, that is cool. If, like, so I think it gives you every single... Let's make it... An... Um, it's going to go black for a second. Um, okay, so... Congratulations, yes, to Rosa Luxemburg, who was yep. cheap car transport in the chat. I don't know how well people can hear me. Um, right, and uh, Music Gecko's got to go, unfortunately. Aww. So we Goodbye, will, Music Gecko. We we'll will miss see you. you later. We will miss you. Thank you for livening up the stream and correcting my rather spotty German. <laughs> and, <laughs> and in comparison, and Jasmine's good. non-existent. Good luck, Music Gecko. Yes, good luck. Um, how long are we going to keep... I don't know. 
keep it up. I don't know what time you're going to kick me out of your house. <laughs> I mean, you were here pretty late last night. That's true. Last time. Last night. <laughs> last time. Not last night. Last time. Should I move into frame? You should come join me in come frame. Come join, yes. After all your attempts to not be in frame. Yes, I, I've been loosened up now. Embarrassed yourself on stream enough. <laughs> and demolishing your house in the process. Um, yeah, here comes a chair. Wait. There we go. We got this. Um, what was I looking for? Window capture. That's the one I want. Great new. Okay. Why is XO? Microsoft Excel. Okay. Right, that That's needs to go behind that one. That's massive. Yeah, it is. Let's make that smaller. Okay, now we can see what we're doing. Almost. Right. That's, that's good enough. That would do. Um, I don't know if we zoom in a little bit. I agree, Florence. Ah, numbers. Ah, numbers, yeah. Yes. Oh, it's so much I'm brighter over here. On number strike these days. Like someone presents a maths question, I just fat out refuse to even let my brain have a go at it. So thankfully, the way this works, I think, is this is every person's answer to every question. Uh. So yeah, you'll notice. Question one. Oh right, and then it goes. Hence, it's so massive. So I guess the idea here for teachers is you can see who's answering what specifically. Ah, we know all of what all of you did. Dun dun dun. And you can see all the names that I missed out earlier by mistake. Yeah. There's some so interesting is there one. a, a overall that just says has the question breakdown, but I don't think it has the. Uh, I think. Oh, final scores. Final scores. So we get to see what everyone. Oh. Had. Rosa Luxemburg came first, obviously. Yes. Dixie Norma's made it into it. Also, this this area of the screen's where our um, webcam is currently. So. Yeah. Obviously, it's not quite as readable as I'd like it. Oh, why not? What are you doing? Oh, just making it more readable. <laughs> You're gonna crash this computer, changing it all to mysterious thing. It was worth it. it there was we worth go. It. <laughs> Wait, I'm just gonna move this box actually. So, oh, oh wrong one. They, I couldn't even see what I just did. That's the one I want. Move this out the way. There we go. That way everyone can see nicely. Cool. So. Um. Like. Uh, <laughs> Dixie Normus. Eva, smiley face. Just smiley face. Hind. That face is great. That is good. Can we I don't know copy how... that and send it to me? Copy it and send it to you. Um. How do you want me to send it to you? Oh, don't do it now. We'll Just dump it in the yeah, chat. dump it in the chat. Wait, actually, I still have my thing open. Let's not do that. Never okay. mind. That um, can be a thing for later. Sure. Uh, just to say as well, um, regarding predictions, I know a few people have asked. Yeah. Already, we can't really give any Yeah, not any proper... Come up, so. Probably lots of Nazi stuff, because yeah. last year's paper was very Weimar-centric. Yeah. Lord Byron, I wonder who that is. Gee, I don't know. Vanessa? Turbo Cheesecake. Oh, Turbo Cheesecake ended up in 12th after the great streak at the start. Mooncake? Yes. Loading. <laughs> Exam. <laughs> Mussolini 2.0. Hindenburger. Such a great name. Shall I take this? Andrew. Fresh Cheese. Stresman. Stresman. Kate. Please kill me now. Hi. Please it's kill like, me now had a good streak at the start as well. This is like a sentence. Kate, please kill me now. Hi. Hi, for real von Pappen. Revision. <laughs> Sandy. Sandy. <laughs> Yeet the Fuhrer, Beal Sonwheel. <laughs> Hello, Ivy. Communism, Sarah Banks. Rookster. James. Hi, James. <laughs> Fia Khalifa. <laughs> Ellie. Stan Luna. I am free account. Oh. Answering from three different things. Oh, I see. Rushy, uh, answering from three different things. 39th. <laughs> Rushy, 
history, Hindenburg. In fairness, if you're answering from three different things, you have to think about where it is on three different devices. That's true, and you can't take the same... History should have... His history's... I mean, imaginative name there. <laughs> Hindenburg, Cornish pasty, Victoria, Ian and Jill, Himmler, Avshanol, I think, Omar, oh. Jachor, Wishi, <laughs> Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong, Cha, Hadouken, or Hadouken, Oh. GTA 5 Stressman. That, that's an S. It's an attempt at Gus. Oh, Gustav. is it meant to be Gustav Stressman? Okay. Yeah, but it's like Gustav Stressed Man. I prefer GTA 5 Stressed Man. Goebbels. Goebbels, Goebbels did a terrible job. He <laughs> elongated mask. <laughs> Blank. Stressman. Is there a second Stressman? Yeah. Hitler. Higher. Anu. General Kenobi. Von Papen. Kimi Head. Hortler, I'm a mistake, Daisy Renton, Yakov, Walrus, John, uh, Heil, Al Lloyd, Kim Jong Uno, I'm gonna fail, where well, he lived up to nominative determinism there. In need, in need. You're not gonna fail, I'm gonna fail, you're gonna pass. Hi, Omar, yeah. BPS represent, Hitler again, Mahir, Nawaz Sharif, Golden, Yeet, grade 8 incoming. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's grade nine incoming, I'll have you know. There were 86 people in that whole... That is impressive. That is amazing. Yeah. That so it sounds like quite a lot of people... Yeah. I don't know. Do people want to... Should we end it here, or do we have do um, like another shorter Kahoot, or...? I feel like another Kahoot, maybe. It would be popular, but I don't know if we'd be able to... Know. We're having the problem is is if we're having problems getting it ready, then it's sort of yeah, a little bit unfair. Yeah. Um, maybe we could have this time as a general question and answer. Yeah, general Q and A time. Yeah, please throw us. Well, I'm assuming to do with throw Omar us Germany. Your stuff. Yeah. Or like exam technique. That's the wrong thing. <laughs> did, did, did it go back to just webcam too? <laughs> <laughs> that was our failed experiment with Skype, so that we could have Byron on on screen as well. Beautiful. Oh, it's a rice cake. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why you don't click the wrong button. Or I don't click the wrong button. Yes. I'm, I'm massive. Yes, you are. I'm not used You're to You're like this. three times my height. Everyone is. I was going to say. <laughs> and any questions? Uh, let's see. No. <laughs> Give it a second. Oh, um... Women policies, like specific facts specific and persecution facts. of minorities. We did sort of gloss over chapter four. Mm. So it might be an idea if we sort oh, of cover it. The textbook's all the way text over there. Why did I put the textbook over the here? The textbook's full of beautiful specific facts. facts. And Don't oh, that bottle doesn't over. matter. Oh, um, what is a Nazi? I, I think if you're asking that question, then... Um, it's a bit late. I mean, from a more, I guess, not philosophical point of view, what constitutes, I mean, these days, who knows? Yeah. Um, I feel like this is a separate topic oh, to be no. dived into on a separate... True, true. Um, no, I was going to say with the... Um, what was it? So, all Nazi party members are, by definition, Nazis, right? Yeah. Right, okay. I, I think so. I think that's correct. Anyway, I've just done specific women place. facts. Um, right, um, I don't think they're women. No. No. Wait, if you want to moderate the chat. Oh yes, chat yes, button. you can do the actual specific. work. Specific. I'm just going to disappear Let's out of frame. Find the women. <laughs> Who's Hitler? Good question. Oh yeah, we're also getting asked uh, Nazis' impact on young people, which is in the same bit in the book. The women, where are the women? <laughs> An eternal question. <laughs> um, oh, um, Anangan Robinson asks, uh, Can you give a quick overview of the paper? I don't know if you didn't you already. I have a video yeah. where I go through the whole an overview of the paper. Yeah. The one, the, the, the most recent actual video says, similar thumbnail to this one. Mm -hmm. um, 
It says paper three overview. Yes. Um, someone asked if we could cover the cap and Munich putsch. Uh, we covered that about an hour ago yes, on the stream. So um, go back. Yeah, go back. Uh, um, can't find the women. Oh, oh, I think I might have found the women. Nazi breaking news: Jasper has women. found the women. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, what have we got here? Uh, birth rates falling in Germany. In 1900, there had been 2 million births per year in Germany. By 1933, this had fallen to 1 million. Uh, the Nazis were concerned because fewer children meant fewer German workers and soldiers to soldiers later on. Um, so the Nazis tried to reverse the falling birth rate. So they, they passed. In 1933, there was the law for encouragement of marriage. Um, loans worth up to 1,000 marks, about eight months' wages were provided to encourage young couples to marry. The law also encouraged wives to stay at home and bring up children, as these loans were only available if the wife stopped work. It also encouraged childbirth. Um, for each child born into a family, a quarter of the loan was written off. So if a family had four children, the loan had been completely paid off. Um, divorce laws. Uh, in 1938, the Nazis changed divorce laws to encourage childbirth. If a woman would not or could not have children, or had an abortion, this could be used as grounds for divorce by the husband. The Mother's Cross was like an award established to help encourage um, childbirth. Um, it was given for to women based on how many children they'd had. So you get a bronze Mother's Cross if you have four or five children, six uh, silver for six or seven, and gold for eight, and they were given as medals. The Hitler Youth were ordered to salute wearers of gold medals mothers of ten children were expected to name Hitler as the godfather of the tenth child, and if it was a boy, give him the name Adolf. Um, yeah, there's also there's quite a lot of stuff on women, actually. There's the Levensborn, um, which means Fountain of Life, which was a program to encourage childbirth. Again, Nazis wanted lots of children to be born. Um, initially, this only provided nurseries and financial aid for women who had children with SS men, but later it encouraged single women to breed with SS men. <laughs> and this was to create genetically pure children for worthy German families. Um, yeah. Employment wise, um, the Nazis worked to try and reduce the number of women in work. Um, they did this, one of the ways they did this was through propaganda, trying to like persuade women to not have as many children. Uh, not to, ha to have more children and to not be in work as much even um, they told women uh, to concentrate on the three K's which were Kinder Kutch and Kirch that's how we're pronouncing it which means yes. children, kitchen and church mm -hmm. and many women thought this was a good idea um, the Nazis also introduced new polic polic policies to reduce the number of women at work so from 1933 women were banned from professional posts as teachers, doctors and civil servants by the end of 1934, about 360,000 women had given up work. From 1936, no woman could become a judge or a lawyer or even do jury service. Schoolgirls were trained for motherhood, not work. For example, they were taught housework, such as ironing and other domestic tasks. And in 1937, grammar schools for girls, which prepared girls for university, were banned. The number of female students starting higher education fell from just over 17,000 in 1932 to 6,000 in 1939. Um, that's talking about women within the Nazi party. So yeah, I think we've, we've covered that. Mm -hmm. Got some specific facts in there. Oh, good, good. I was listening. That's good. I, that's sure the stuff that I remember really well. So, you know. mm. um, I was going to say anything interesting going on in the chat. Uh, Any other questions? Yes. Um, Okay, so some other stuff. Apologies for the deader. Uh, oh, um, the KDF, DAF, and the beauty of labour. Oh, yeah, that's kind of important. Yeah. And um, some stuff on the Nazi control. So this is basically, I think, what we're covering now. Yep. I believe. I could be wrong. Do you want to do that? My voice is weak. Oh, God. <laughs> but I'll be, I'll be talking to the people. Yeah, you'll be talking Can't to the people that. with them watching your face. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, they'll see me reading from the book. That's the right page. Like okay. you can, you can basically 
almost directly read out from the book. True. I if mean, you're good at reading time to aloud. <laughs> and you can skip around if True. you know that you're not about to read the sentence correctly. Yes. Um, so, uh, did you want to switch seats and you wanted to moderate the chat, or do you want to stay on this side? Um, we can swap seats. Cool. <sighs> but I like that seat. Well. My preferred seat. Small person. So small seat. Small person, small seat. And I have lost the page. Oh no. Why am I so useless? Okay, so... Yeah, I'm not really centre, am I? That, that, that. that will have to do. Uh, let's find the page in the big book. So... So, the Labour Front, uh, reading verbatim from the textbook. Normally, trade unions help... In Normally, trade unions help to protect and improve the standard of living for workers. However, Hitler believed that trade unions supported his political rivals, the Communist Party. He also believed that powerful trade unions could disrupt the economy, for example by calling strikes. So, in 1933, the Nazi government banned trade unions. This was not a good start for the standard of living of German workers. In place of trade unions, Hitler set up the DAF. Now, this is going to be a bit of an experiment on my part, but the Deutsche Arbeitsfront, or German Labour Front, in 1933. The DAF protected the rights of workers, for example, set out the rights of workers in the workplace, maximum length of the working week, and minimum pay levels. Hello. Hello. Sorry. Oh, am I, going, am I doing this? Am I doing this well? Yes, you're doing a good job. I haven't just suddenly left the stream. Actually, you have no way of knowing be talked to no one. Yeah, that's me most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so the DAF regulated what employers could do and in this sense it protected the standard of living for German workers. In some ways German workers were worse off under the DAF than they had been under trade unions. Uh, workers had lost their right to negotiate improvements in pay and conditions with their employers. The maximum length of the working week set by the DAF went up by about six hours. Oh, what have you seen? Oh, someone said you're doing great, Byron. That is the sort of positive encouragement I need. Exactly. The DAF had the power to punish workers who disrupted production. I'm going to move slightly closer to the microphone and you know, do this age-old technique of putting the book down. That's a good idea. There we go. I feel like that's more, less relaxed. I feel yeah. like. Go good. for it. Uh, the DAF had the power to punish workers who disrupted production. Uh, overall, the role of the DAF was to control both employers and employees. This was to ensure that business worked, but not for the interests of business owners or workers, but for the interests of the state. So, let's see, we have got Strength Through Joy, or KDF, or Kraft Deutsch Freud. I think that's correct, actually. I think I might have got that close to being correct. It's Who something. Who knows? I it's don't pronunciation. know. As you can tell, I'm an expert on German pronunciation. Oh, yes. As, as the chat has revealed this evening. All right. Oh. Uh, uh, Reorganisation of the party. We covered that earlier. Did we? Okay, good. Yeah, the good. mean years. Um, yeah, if you go back on the stream, you should be able to find it somewhere. Marvellous. Um, Probably like yeah. hour one. Yeah. However many after, hours. After the third video the third at some video. point. Right. So I think the next time we do this, just a brief thing, I think we should. I should keep an eye on what time we start doing things so I can refer people back to it. Yes, that's, that's a good idea. If we do another live stream, that is. Yeah. Okay, so, Hitler realised that the loss of trade unions could be a source of unrest among German workers. Because of this, the Nazis had to set up another organisation in 1933 to improve the standard of living workers. It was named Strength Through Joy, or KDF, and it was a division of the DAF. So, is it really a separate organisation? Who knows? The purpose of the KDF was to make the benefits of work more enjoyable, so that Germans would see their work as a way to happy life, as well as making the nation stronger. One way the KDF improved the benefits of work was to provide leisure activities for workers. These included sports events, films, theatre shows, outings and even foreign travel. Most activities were low-key, but they were well supported. Uh, just having a look here, there is a graph of loads of different stuff that people did. Um, thousands of events uh, with millions of people in attendance. Uh, one of them being theatre performances, 11 million people apparently went to the theatre through Strength Through Joy related activities, which is not to be scoffed at. One way the KDF improved the benefits of work was to provide leisure activities for workers. Oh, I've read that bit. 
You can oh. tell I'm used to reading from a teleprompter and I don't really think about what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the comments, I know what I'm writing there. So, the most loyal workers could even win impressive holidays. Most workers were expected to join the KDF and were encouraged to take part in its activities. Interesting that it wasn't a mandatory thing, that people mm. could choose to join it. Yeah. 35 million people joined the KDF by 1936. Um, so, in a similar regard, apparently the KDF was also responsible for the creation of the Volkswagen car, which I'm sure we're all familiar with today. Um, but I... Ooh, okay, I'd forgotten about this. So, they had created the car, and it sort of was a little bit of a... Uh, what you call it? Uh, scam, I think is the correct term. Yep. Because essentially, I think that is the correct term. Uh, workers would contribute about five marks per week, I think, for ages, and eventually they'll get their car. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no cars were given. Um, I think. But marks were. Yeah, marks, marks were given. So please give please all the money you have. Yes, and we won't give you a car. Maybe we'll give you a car. Um, anything else that we need to talk about? Um, uh, anything in the um, oh, it was actually called the Volkswagen Swindle. Okay, so I was right. There is a term. You can tell it's been a little while since I've done yeah, this. Any other questions, anyone? Um, I hate reading from I the book. I think we might be a good... And it's nicer to have notes to oh, yes, crash I know, through. I know. It's, I but know if, if all else fails, we got our lovely textbook. I've got the textbook. The problem is for me is I feel like... And I mean this in the nicest way, and this isn't a criticism of you. But you could read the textbook at home. Yes. We the added value is in us discussing True. it somewhat. Not everyone actually has a copy of the textbook. Don't they? No. Well do schools not give them out? Uh, I mean our school we only they use them in oh, lesson. Really? No one got to take any home. Wow. These are my actual own copies that I bought. Wow, things have changed in just like two years. Like we all got. Someone wants us to teach the AQA chemistry content. Uh, unfortunately I did my best to forget all of that. With my D in Core science chemistry, I'm sure I'll be able to help out there. I got an eight in my chemistry. <laughs> you let them show up. I, I don't understand science. Science is not in my area of expertise. Opposition to Hitler. Teach um, me maths. Teach me maths. Loki Again. and construction. Ah, now. Construction and lo That's the fun bit. That's like the drawing in maths. Yeah, I can't remember. It's where that. you get a compass and just draw some specific patterns. Hmm. Like that's, that's the nice bit. Everything else about maths is like. Ugh. Yeah, unfortunately I won't be able to help with maths either, I've forgotten most yeah. of that. Loki has already come up on paper too. <laughs> this is not a maths channel. <laughs> a long, long time ago does maths. Well, trigonometry was invented a long, long time ago. What, Pythagoras? Pythagoras the history even. of Pythagoras. I'll <laughs> oh, do that, you need to do that. As an April Fool's video next year. Oh, just what did I get in maths? I got an 8 in maths. You got an 8. What did you get in your maths? Oh, I got a B, which is what, a 7? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, that's a six. Is a six. What? Yeah. But well, they don't quite line up perfectly. Okay. Well, I got so a, a nine B. is like a top end A star, and then an eight is like a mostly A star. Um, right. High A. Oh right. But okay. I like around. I'd say eight A star is how I'd associate it. Right. Okay. So I got a B. So. Yeah. Quite a high B, in fairness. <laughs> but you know, Jas. I was about to say Jasmine. Likes Jasmine. <laughs> I didn't you get anything below a seven in my GCSE. <laughs> you know that that's not true for me. Because I, well, I've, I've got some interesting grade oh. revelations, oh. which we'll keep to ourselves. Yes, we'll keep that to ourselves. <laughs> for what it's worth, I got an A in AS and A-level history. That's all we need to think about. And an A-star in the Germany topic. So, you know. Yep. We forget about the rest of it. Jasmine is laughing off camera. <laughs> words i think i think we've come to the end of the questions i feel like yeah and it is coming up to four is it four hours we've been doing this for almost four we have been doing half. this for one hell of a long time yes and i finally appeared on your channel physically <laughs> someone suggested that i should properly go into chemistry stuff I don't remember what's on the chemistry so, spec or anything is, about chemistry. Is there anything honest. I remember about chemistry? No. I know that all the experiments involve hydrochloric acid. <laughs> and okay. people... No, people I'm die sure there you. was one time in my class where someone you kept like glass bottles of hydrochloric acid and someone dropped it in the sink and it <laughs> smashed. <laughs> that's 
of other time someone spilt like uh, magnesium to something, some kind of like catalyst yeah. all over my seat. The best one for me was we'd had these, I think it was to do with the water content of potatoes. And someone just picked up a slice of the potato they were using for a test and ate it. People. People are strange. We're strange. Yeah. yeah, I think. I'm not going to con- continue singing. I th- feel like we've probably, people are probably pretty fed up of us by now. Yeah, I feel like. And my voice is dead. We've been going on for absolutely ages. Vanessa points out that we have outmatched Hitler's speech at the Flamberg concert, the conference. My nearly. We dissolved. haven't done five hours yet. All oh, right. But yeah, we're getting we're getting close. Osmosis in biology is a potato. Ah, oh, right, okay. wrong science, Byron. That's basically right. the same. What's should the we difference? say goodbye? We probably should. So, um, this is your stream. Good you luck. take over. Good luck, everyone, in your exam oh, tomorrow. Good luck. Good luck. Um, you nailed the kahoot earlier, so mm. despite the whole technical problems, yeah, you have half delayed. the time. To and do still it. nailed it. So obviously, this means that Edexcel should just half the time of the exam. <laughs> Now everyone has an extra 15 minutes this year, I believe. Yes, you mentioned. Yeah, I so, might be wrong. Someone told me it in the comments section. I see. Oh, um, someone asked me earlier, but I'd forgotten why I was going to ask it earlier. They don't have to do coursework, do they? No. No. So it is, well, from my perspective, yeah. slightly easier. <laughs> yeah, so... Natty perspective is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I th- think just just good luck. Good luck, everyone. You're going to yes. nail it. Um, Who am I? I don't know. We could try and... I don't know. What, what, what do people think about the idea if we do a, a post live stream, uh, post exam kahoot at some point, where we have like a a chill thing? Yes, we should have a chill stream. Yeah. Just random history. I don't know. Stuff. Yeah. Just have a, a chill time. Yeah. All right. Anyway, I guess goodbye. Yes. Oh. Um, anything else before we sign off? I don't think so. You're all going to nail it. Yes. Subscribe. Oh yeah, subscribe to Byron. <laughs> his, I left his channel in the description. Yes. He makes history videos. Yes. You... He doesn't have enough subscribers. No, and um, obviously I am going to beg. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, seriously, my channel's pretty good. And. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, good luck, everyone. You will ace it. I am sure there are nines in the skies for everyone. Yes, nines for everyone. Good night. Bye.